coming at you from the OLR podcast studio. Eh, it's really more of a basement. Coming to you from the OLR basement studio. But it's still a podcast. Coming to you from the podcast basement studio. Yeah, but you still need to say OLR. Coming to you from the OLR podcast basement studio. Oh, that's way too many words. Coming at you. That's not enough. You still need to say OLR. Let's just start. It's OLR. <coughs> Welcome back to the One Lane Road podcast. <coughs> we did sneak in one more on you. We Got it. Ha ha. So we're going to maybe n- get in another. End of the year. Um. Uh, so, got a little news about the kid. You know how uh you know how babies will lose weight at the hospital, right? Or you know right after they're born, they come out, they weigh <laughs> yeah. weigh X and then they by the time you leave the hospital, it's like holy shit, they're wasting away to nothing. Yeah. So, we set up the doctor's appointment. Camden already had a doctor's appointment for Friday. We had Elijah Wednesday. So, we just called the nurse practitioner. And wound up taking him right to the doctor for his first checkup on Friday. So we got to go home on Thursday and turn around and took him to the doctor on Friday. So, you know, he's seen the doctor really quick. He's down to, he went from seven pounds, one ounce to six pounds, seven ounces, Hmm. which seems like a lot to me. I may be wrong, but you know, it's It's generally not what you look for is going that direction. Yeah. 10 ounces seems like a lot. (sighs) When you only weigh seven pounds already, 10 ounces is a lot. Doctor said, no, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, we just want them to be back up to their birth weight in about two weeks. So you've got a two-week appointment. We're just looking for that baby to be back up there in two weeks. Right. So this week was his two-week checkup. And I knew, I knew something was going on with the kid. I knew, he was, I knew he was getting plenty to eat. The first thing that tipped us off was that tw- in 12 days, we used 162 diapers. That's 13 and a half diapers a day. Oh. So doing a little Google, little Google, you're looking for about five. Looking for about five to seven, Golly. five to seven diapers yeah. in a day. We've gone through 13 and a half a day for 12 days. I'm thinking everything's all right. So they thought he'd gained about 10 to 12 ounces in uh, two weeks. He gained two pounds and three ounces. In two weeks, <laughs> this kid, this kid blew up. He's gonna be a monster. He's just eating all the time. He's eating. You're supposed to feed them every three hours. You know, you're supposed to wake them up, make sure they're eating. You know, you got to make yeah. sure those kids are eating. No, not this. And not only does he, not only does he wake up every two and a half hours to eat, he eats for an hour, hour and fifteen <laughs> minutes every time he's eating. So he's uh, he's getting it in there. So. Mama's sleeping time where she should have, you know, she should be feeding for about 30 minutes. Kid ought to be able to eat for about 30 minutes. And then you're going to get about two and a half hours of sleep in there. She gets about 15 minutes because the kid eats for two hours and he wakes up and eats, eats for another two hours. But he's gained two pounds and three ounces. That boy going to be husky. He's going to be a big boy. <laughs> Mama was, my mom was saying, his cheeks are really filling out. His cheeks are really filling out. I was like, I can't, I can't see it. I can't. I just can't see it. So I took a picture side by side. Looks like two different kids in two weeks. Yeah, two different kids. Yeah, I saw him after we wrapped up our Christmas. Or was it a? Yeah, it was a Christmas podcast we done last time, yeah. and we. Uh, he's a little bitty old thing. Little bitty thing. He's still a little bitty. Brandon Likens looking thing. I said. Yeah, but which is looks oh. just like Kara. Which Kara because because Kara kind of looks just like her brother. Yeah, he still got he still got that Likens look in his eyes, but he's got them Hickman jaws. I'd say because a Hickman has never had a kid that didn't look like a Hickman. Right. Really. Right. Camden, spitting image. Yeah. Eli looks like his mama. Mm-hmm. We're but getting... unfortunately for him, he's got my fat face. <laughs> well, Jack's the same way. He's know? got my hairline, too, unfortunately for him. I can already see it. He's already got those widow's peaks. I don't know what Bayless kind of... Do you remember how Bayless's hair grew in where it was like that side... Yeah. Uh, side of uh, mo- uh, mohawk? Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. Jax is straight up Kennedy, I'm telling you. Now, Waylon is a Waylon's a pretty good mixture. He's kind of got my body type and everything, and then helmet head when, and <laughs> cankles and yeah. such. Uh-huh. But uh, he's kind of built. I mean, kind of looks a little like Lindsay more so, a little uh-huh. bit. I don't know. It's, he's Like I said, he's a good mixture. Bayless is straight up Lindsay. 
I mean, hundred percent. Right. Looks, acts. <laughs> you so, know, I told you about what I told the poor nurse at the uh, doctor's office when we were staying there at the hospital. I said, "I'll help you do whatever." It's. I, I believe I've told everybody I sleep like a maniac, and you, you shouldn't wake me up. Like you shouldn't touch me to wake me up. And I told the, I told the nurse said, uh, uh, "I'll help you do whatever you need done in the middle of the night." If you need if you need some help, you need to get my wife up or you need to do something like that. I'll help you do whatever. You just probably should stand over there and holler at me and wake me up. And then I'll come over there and help you. But I said I may be a little groggy, but I'll I'll be, I'll do whatever you need me to. Last night I picked Camden up. He was still asleep, but he's taking a nap on the couch and I picked him up and woke him up. Little dude come up swinging. I mean, tapped me on the face, pop 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 pop, got me in the chest twice. And I said, hey, buddy, <laughs> did, you, uh, did I surprise you? He goes, I thought you was a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Camden not only looks like me, he sleeps like me, too. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. That's all I've done since uh, December 11th is uh, kids. Ugh. Kids kids and little cattle. <laughs> kids and little cattle. Yeah. We got, uh, Bales has got a new one. I know we yeah. the chocolate milk, my sippy cups become kind of a. Uh, Cult favorite, cult favorite here on the podcast, and it's uh, he's got a new one. Yeah, because he's he's really hit that jealousy stage now. Jack is such a happy baby. Right. When you see us posting pictures of Jack being happy, that he's like that all the time. Mm-hmm. When he when he gets the the boo, he's he's good. That's the only time he gets halfway whiny. The kid smiles all the time. Thank God, because if somebody would have given me two Bayless in a row, <laughs> I don't know if I can handle it. Right. Because I still can't handle Bayless all the time, but. He's really starting to get more of a more of a clinginess to Lindsay, and uh-huh. uh, even when I'm like, "Buddy, I can do it for you," no, I want Mama to do it. I mean, it's, it's pretty damn frustrating when you're sitting here like, "Let me do it, yeah. let me help you," uh-huh. and he's just all about his mama. So he's got another one now that says, and he does this to me and Lindsay, whoever he's talking to. He goes, "Daddy, uh, when you get through eating supper, will you play?" Uh, yeah, maybe, buddy. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, <laughs> but buddy, I said my, maybe. My, did, did you say yes? Say yes, Daddy. Did, are you gonna play? Say yes. <laughs> did you say yes? <laughs> I said maybe, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Just let me eat supper. Uh-huh. Then, then you gonna play? Maybe. Yeah, it's a maybe. It's a, it's a maybe right now, buddy. It's a hard, hard maybe. Say right. yes, yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Dad, you said yes. You yeah. said yes, you'll play. I, I did. I did say oh, that. I, don't know. I said yes, honey. <laughs> I go in the living room and go take a nap. <laughs> He's all about that, man. He is. Hey, kids are really good. Yeah. I really, I really enjoy kids. The, uh, boy, that crying for no reason. You can't help them. You can't help a little kid. You can't help an infant. You know what I mean? Camden, I can help. I can talk to him. I can logic with. I can I logic with him a little bit. I say, "Do you understand?" He'll go, "Yeah, I understand." I said, "Well, repeat it back to me." He'll repeat it back to me. So I have a, I have a belief that he has an understanding at that point. Boy, Eli, man, can't can't even talk to him. Can't can't say nothing to him. Well, he's a. You can say every whatever. He was crying the other night, and I was going, "Shh, that's enough, buddy. Shh, that's enough." Everything's fine. Wait till he's three and three quarters doing it. And uh, I was, you know, I was rocking him a little bit. And Camden come up to me and goes, Camden's the voice of reason in the house sometimes. He goes, Daddy, he's a baby. That's what they do sometimes while he's patting my arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, but Waylon's the voice of reason in our house because sometimes me and Lindsay will be having an absolute meltdown with Bayless. Uh-huh. And that, kid's hurt. that kid's affected us. Right. I have no lies to tell on this podcast. I mean, this kid has affected us. Right. They'll do it. Yeah. He's, I mean, God, I mean, the other day I took off, I'll, well, I'll just say, you know, he's really good when he's really good. Right. He's, it, he's good. I won't say really. I don't, I don't <laughs> want to set the bar here. Uh-huh. But, man, he, he he's just something I've never seen because Waylon wasn't like this. And I wholeheartedly believe Jack's not going to be the way he's, right. even his, his demean, demeanor yeah. already. But, man, when, when Bela starts for no reason and then, uh, like there's one that day I was I may have mentioned this in the 
on a podcast previously. And I don't. I know we talk about our personal lives a lot. Yeah. Sometimes you probably get too personal. But I was in there watching a game, and she was trying to get him to sleep, and she was just unloading. Like mm-hmm. just, I'm like, okay. I, I'd usually try to step in like that's probably a little much for right. a three year old to be. You know, come mm-hmm. on, honey, it's a little much. So I'm like, honey, you can go out on the porch and chill out. I'll just get you some air. She goes, he's just so much, he's so much, and she's like having a breakdown. Right. And she's on the porch, and I'm just like, dude, what are you doing? I was like, you got your mom in here freaking out. Uh-huh. I said, just can you just not listen? Just please, just listen. Just listen a little just bit. Just listen a little bit, dude. Like, we're pretty good to you. Right. You know, I said, I said, I don't want that. I've already had my chocolate milk, and mama, mama wouldn't let me give another chocolate milk. I said, buddy, you just had a chocolate milk in your sippy cup about 20 minutes ago. Uh-huh. You don't need another one to go to sleep on. I don't want it. I want Kid City. Oof. I said, Kid City, buddy. I said, we've really got to get you to watch real cartoons. I said, this stuff is stupid. It's rotting right your brain. I said, it's really stupid stuff. I said, you're walking around saying stu- stuff, stuff that don't even make sense. I said, like, come on, buddy. Uh-huh. Help me out here. And then he, st- he stopped screaming at me. And the next thing you know, I'm in the hallway under my breath going, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> you're out on the porch. I'm on the porch with her Lindsay. saying, honey, yeah. He's just so much. <laughs> I said, I'm so sorry. He's just so much. And we're hugging. Like, yeah. we're, having a, we're having a bonding moment right. over our child who's a fucking demon. <laughs> and But, man, it's just, you need, and I know some people probably listen to this going, why is he talking about his kids that way? Hey, because yeah, it's real and you don't have kids and you don't know. Yeah. If you, you know, wonder, you don't yeah. know. Yeah. But. At the same time, you know, like the other morning, I said, he woke up. Lindsay was gone to cook well with Jack for a, something. And I said, hey, buddy. Yeah, how'd you sleep? Slept good, daddy. How yeah. are you this morning? Come hug my neck. Yeah. Of course, said, chocolate milk my sippy cup. Yes, let's get that knocked out of the way. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And then I said, hey, I said, I told Ro- uh, I told uh, Fancy and Rocky I'd take them for a ride in the truck today. Because that's what we do. We're Ricky uh-huh. Kennedy's right. ch- child. We talked to dogs. Yeah. I said, come on, you want to go take him for a ride? Yep. Bubby going to go? I said, no, I'll wake him up. So, of course, now I've got a teenager uh-huh. who thinks it's the end of the world. To get up. To get up. Uh-huh. And I said, Waylon, Waylon, come here, buddy. Waylon, come downstairs. Gets up, comes down in his underwear, <laughs> hair just like everywhere. everywhere. He goes, what? I said, hey, dude, me and Bayless about to go ride the dogs. And I said, I guess you don't want to go. Oh, Okay, well, hey, and just turn on the alarm, have your cell phone on you. And I always make him turn on the alarm. When yeah. I, even, I said, uh, Daddy, I got to go back to school soon. And, you know, it'd been nice to be able to sleep in one day. <laughs> I went, yeah, it's 1015. Yeah, you're, you're in. It's, you're in as far as. And he said, oh, crap. I didn't realize it was that late. My bad. <laughs> I said, yeah, so me and Bayless went and had the best time. And we, yeah. we come back and I said, hey, let's go, so let's go get Bubby. Let Bubby drive the tracker for a little while. Went and got the tracker, left the top. Well, we don't have a top, so um, loaded the dogs up, and we went down on the farm, and we'd mess around for two or three hours, bales, yeah. jump around on hay bales. And I think as long as you keep him active. Yeah. Yeah, just have but, something planned for him, right? It's like, dude, sometimes daddy's tired. Yeah, sometimes daddy don't have a plan. Sometimes daddy just wants to sit in the chair. And man, he just – and I tell Lindsay all the time, like, you know, I, I said, he, he's just adjusting. He's just adjusting. He's jealous. Uh-huh. You got to think about that. I know, Dustin. I know, but I've told him. Uh-huh. I've told him. And Waylon comes down and has to be like, hey, buddy. And I don't give Waylon enough credit, man. He's awesome. He comes down and says, hey, buddy, come come on. Come here. You're, you're really stressing mom and daddy out. Come on. Like, yeah. Dude, our 13 year old <laughs> is the grown up in the house. <laughs> is the grown up, man. I just want to cry sometimes. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I can't. Somebody please come wire my damn building out back so I can move. <laughs> I'm putting a deadbolt on the inside. Yeah. Locking this thing shut. We'll be in it. And I'm just going to have a little spout running out the, the front side, out the window that just uh, that spouts out chocolate milk. <laughs> just shoot it down. Just put your sippy cup at the bottom. Put your sippy cup down there. <laughs> Oh me! That's enough about kids for that the day. That is a lot about kids, man. I'm sorry. I'm That's sorry. 15 I, minutes. I really apologize well, yeah. for calling my child a devil, a demon. Whatever demon I call is what him. you said. Yeah, a, an effing demon. Yeah, that was extreme, and I apologize. I immediately regretted that one. <laughs> 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 I mean, I meant it. Yeah, but I it regret, was true. But I, I regret saying it on the microphone. Yeah, ah. but you know what? People, 
people that have what epi- kids. What episode is this? 133 or so. This is me at this point. Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of what it is. Uh, and you know what? Don't ever, until you have children. Don't ever judge somebody that's got kids. Don't ever be that person that looks down at somebody in the grocery store. Because, you know, some women are like, you know, they'll they'll fuss at their kids. But then there's always that one woman that is like, is just freaking out. freaking out and just saying bad things to kids. You're like, what a bitch. Yeah. Like, you're the most miserable bitch I've ever known in my life. You don't know what that woman's been through in the last 30 that's minutes. That's true. You know, you don't know what she's been putting up with for the last little bit. Time. Also, she could be a miserable bitch. But she absolutely she very well, could be. There's two scenarios there, and they both could be equally true. Yeah, yeah. And she could be a bitch regardless. But yeah, that may have. That there may have not been anything going on 30 minutes ago. <laughs> she could just be a miserable. Bitch. Yeah, but time. she could have been being screamed at too for the last five hours. The time we were at Cheddar's when Bayless was like a year and a half old, and he was acting crazy, and he was crawling on the table, and we were we'd get him off the table, and he crawled back on the table, then he was crawling under the table, and he was like messing with the blinds at Cheddar's, and uh-huh. he, had a, he had a knife out. Wielding it, yeah. Then he started messing with the blinds with a knife, and Lindsay said, "If that bitch across the table don't look at, don't stop looking at me, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm gonna go off on her." Uh-huh. So I turn around, and look. Of course, I make the awkward look, yeah. and then, you know, and then she's like, "I can't do it. I can't. Fuck it. Give me my. Just give me the go plate." Uh-huh. So she takes Bales outside, and me and Waylon are sitting side by side, awkwardly. Uh-huh. He's like, <laughs> Um, so how's this work? Should I move over there or like, are you going to get her to go play? And I said, nah, you know, your mom, son, I said, she'll be back. Yeah. So she's going to go out there and she's going to cuss Bayless out. She's going to probably put a handprint or two on his leg and they'll be back. Yeah. I said, and everything will be cool. She didn't come back. And yeah. We're still standing there. And finally I said, I'll probably ought to get her to go play. I guess I needed a box and poor thing. I ain't got to eat like one bite out of her food. Uh-huh. And then I, I'd give that woman a death stare, like a full on, I passed by her table and went, <laughs> Eyes bugged out like I just yeah. done three lines. Uh-huh. And like, you know what? Kiss my ass. Oh, yeah. You don't know you and your damn husband here in your three piece suits at Cheddar's, like it's, like it's, you know, some steakhouse and now you're <laughs> Bruce Chris here. You know, Cheddar's in a damn three piece suit going somewhere. You damn Chardonnay drinking. <laughs> Baker <bitch>. Woods. <laughs> um, so I celebrated a birthday. Yeah. After, in the meantime. Would you, did you, Expect me to remember it. Uh, I texted you. Wow, you happy did, birthday! Didn't you? I did. Did you expect me to remember? No, it? no. Have I ever? Did Kara tell you it's my birthday? She did. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I must have had some on Facebook already, or she saw it on Facebook. Maybe I don't know. She said, "Hey, today's Dustin's birthday." So, oh shit! Now I'm gonna go back and look at my Facebook timeline and see if Kara put happy birthday. Bet she didn't. She may not have. But she, did, but mentally she said she, she did. Knew, she knew She did the right thing. Hey, you're you're possibly only friend is having a birthday today. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of friends text me that um, appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate the text. I appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, thank appreciate you. you reaching out. That yeah. Um, one time in thirty five years, <laughs> thirty six, thirty six, thirty six years. years old now. Yeah. I, I, look, I'm just going to assume because nobody gives a shit about Christmas. Right. Christmas is over. Did it even feel like Christmas? I mean, no. it was 70 degrees on Christmas Day. I'm going to assume you're, you're, you and your wife and your kids had a good Christmas. We you're, did. You're going to assume that my wife and I kids. I feel like had, y'all did, yeah. Nobody on this listening. No. We've already, we've already given them enough kids, family yeah. content. Yeah. We had a great Christmas. Thanks for asking. Christmas was fantastic. I hope it, hope it was nice and 70 at your house. It was. As well. It was. It was. We got a third, uh, third member of the team now. Hey. Yeah. My new grappling dummy. So, okay. We weren't going to talk about Christmas, but you The do only have, thing I'm going to talk about is my grappling dummy. You do have a grappling buddy strapped to the seat. Yeah. Years. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a Target. I thought it was a Fox racing gear. I didn't know. You how. did ask me if we slipped back into the early thousands and I brought all my racing gear down. So what, what is... Um, you fill it up with... Fill it up with uh, punching bag stuff and then you try to rip its arm off. And you try to choke it out. Is it a one-time use? Nope. Nope. It's real thick, heavy. What if you're... Canvas. Oh. Is it, was that Kara's gift to you? Yep. Yep. Is that all you asked for? Yep. How much something like that run? Not much. Oh, really? Not as much as what you think. 50 bucks. Actually, I didn't know what something like that would cost. So. Yeah. Yeah, not, not, as, not what you think. No, I just said I don't... I oh, yeah. Know. Yeah, you didn't think. Yeah, I didn't. Okay, I'm with you. Now. Twice, I've told yeah. you. <laughs> I ain't listening. <laughs> Uh, well, that's cool. Well, I can't wait to see it filled up. Does it have a face? It does. It's got a big target right on the face. 
So you can punch it. Huh. So it's a neutral. Pretty much. It's neutral. It's not really. No. We don't know if that's a female or male. It's a male. Does it have a dick? Yeah. I didn't see it. You didn't feel for it. Okay. Rich, rich down there and feel for it. Tricked you. Oh, I see the bulge now. Yeah. Silly me. That was mine. He grabbed it. Oh. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Uh, I celebrated my birthday. Yeah. With Dr. Don Asbury. Dr. Don. That's probably a pretty good birthday then, wasn't it? It wasn't. Um, <laughs> no, see, I don't drink when Waylon goes to games with me, like I right. told you. So, uh-huh. Lindsay, uh, being ever the uh, unselfish mother she is, uh-huh. I had a friend of mine from Tutco call me the week before for the Texas games and had his season tickets, which are like 10 or 11 rows from the field. Uh-huh. She was going with me to the whole to the Saints game on my birthday the whole time. Uh-huh. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll drink some beers that game. Yeah. You know, I don't have a kid with me. I'll drink some beers. And when I, when he caught, my buddy called me the day before the Texans game. He's like, hey, I got these seats. You know, I'm just, no, no charge, man. Just, just y'all come on. Yeah. Happy birthday. Uh, Lindsay said, where, where are the seats at? And I said, ah, it's like, I said, they're, it's the visitor side, like 10 rows from the field, I think. She goes, well, if Waylon wants to go with you to your birthday game, because he said he wants to watch Drew Brees. Um, I'll, I'll go with you to that one see so on your birthday. I went, well, okay. Um, well, I was kind of hoping just kind of let loose my birthday a little bit. Not, little not, bit. not, not get drunk. I don't get drunk. I, you know, I, I can actually tell you the last time I got drunk. Right. You know, uh-huh. that, that used to be like, I don't think I got drunk last night. You know, <laughs> I can actually tell you the last time I got drunk. So, no, was I wanting to get drunk? No, but I was wanting to have a good time. Right. I was wanting to have, have a few beers. Have a few beers. I just, I, I can't. Let my hair down when my, when my boy's with me. It's, right. just, it's just something I just not what I want to do. Uh, so I said, "Well, what, so your mom, your mom wants to go to the to the game tomorrow." Uh-huh. I said, "She said you really want to go to the Saints game." Well, I mean, I I like to go tomorrow, but if she, I mean, yeah, if I had to pick one, I guess. I said, <clears throat> "Okay." Well, she doesn't. She plays it off. When we get there at the game. She goes. I only want to come because the seats were so good. I, 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 I didn't want to go up to our seats. I'm like, oh, that's nice. That's nice of you to screw your kid out of sitting 10 rows from the field. Yep. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you women, you're such giving. You're so giving. Uh, sometimes. Yeah. No. Anyway. <laughs> so anyway, no, it was fun. It was fun. The Titans lost, but I mean, they were playing the Saints, which is a big, they were up 14 nothing. Uh, ended up losing 38-28. Ended up not affecting their playoff. We'll talk about that later, but no, it's always fun to hang out with Don. And uh, it, what, at this point, did you expect them to win? Well, yeah, because that's the games they win. The ones that they're not supposed to? Yeah. I mean, oh, okay. I mean, last season, they beat the Eagles and the Patriots, which were the, both the Super Bowl contestants the season before. They've already beat the Chiefs, which is the Cats Meow. It's right. mold. One time, remember the Cats Meow joke <laughs> we made about that one temporary? Remember the temporary worked for me for like six oh, hours one yeah, day and yeah. hated life and everything yeah. that came with it? It's the real cats. No, he said cats pajamas. I cats think. pajamas. Yeah, yeah, but anyway. So yeah, they beat the Chiefs already. So yeah, that's the games they win. I actually yeah. did think they were going, but they didn't have Derrick Henry. Hey, they rested him for this week. So actually, after they got up fourteen nothing, I felt good. That's but, when. <laughs> that's when I expect them to not do very good. It's when <laughs> they're seven. There's. It's like seven to twenty eight. Titans are seven. That's when they. Win. That's when I expect them to win. You never know. You never know. I'm a little disappointed in the crowd that night because I wore my um, Ric Flair Christmas sweater. Nobody knows it. I mean, like I got a few woos. Uh-huh. It said it was Ric Flair going. It said woo is how I say Merry Christmas. Uh-huh. I really thought I'd get some more. You get a couple of woo, but we didn't spend a lot of time. We like we stayed in the back parking lot, the main event parking lot. Then walked over to see Mackie, and you know you got a real best friend when you walk up to him like he went. <clears throat> God damn kid, that thing that sweater about four X. My God, you wear it, you can fit in it. <laughs> no, even on your birthday, it won't give you just a little bit of slack. Yeah. I said, well, when you're tall enough to ride the rise of Dollywood, I'll worry about you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's best friends. Right there. That's best friends. You know, uh, I seen uh two X, by the way. I seen a uh, Titans caravan this week here in town that I didn't know didn't know was around. I don't know about it. It's uh it's an older it's an older camper. And, uh, but I mean, it's like blue and white, got big Titan sticker on the side of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. It says go Titans on it. I thought, well, I don't know why Barry Birdle hadn't bought that yet. I said, uh, that's a, 
That's a real Titans fan right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always said one of those would be neat. But uh, hey, Don brought me a gift. You know, uh, we don't exchange gifts. I'm, right. I, I guess I'm a bad friend because I don't buy my friends stuff. No, you're not. You're you're what should be happening. No, actually. yeah, yeah. Well, Don's a really. I got to brag on Don because every year when we go to a, a Christmas Titans game, he brings my kids a gift, something. Uh-huh. You know, he's always bought Waylon and Bayla stuff. So we continue the tra- tradition this year. I had a big, big bag of stuff for him. So I just want to th- say thank you to Don. He brought me a beer. Um. Uh, Two beers, mm-hmm. and I hate that. I, I don't know what the other one happened. I must have put it back in his cooler because I was going to keep one. But he brought me Stone Cold Steve Austin's uh, oh. IPA beer. Really? That I've tried to order them before just because it's Stone Cold Steve Austin. I thought, I'll try Stone Cold's beer. Yeah. And they, they wouldn't ship it from California to Tennessee. All right. So he, I guess they've changed that policy now. And he, was, he bought a case. Really? But now Don is a self-admitted beer snob, you know. Right. He's, by, he's a craft beer connoisseur. And him, and along with the Fraley family, and uh, um, his, his success rate's not real well on on me trying beer. Right, come on, DK, you you, you might like this one. Yeah, you know, I, I likened it. I told him back a few weeks ago. I said, "You telling me I'm going to like this beer is kind of like Thad Johnson of about seven years ago telling me I, I'm going to like this song." Right. I still remember where I'm at when I cussed Thad out for telling me. Oh, you're going to like this song. Give me the ox chord for a minute. You're going to love this song. I said, Thad, you, you know your uh, success rate's not the best. It's, it it's, it, you're, you're most likely wrong right yeah. now, buddy. I, I'm, I'm going into this with low expectations. A little pessim, pessimism going on because you, your track record's t- horrendous. Something about a truck hmm. and a cotton field, 3 a.m., when she gets naked and uh-huh. you know, whatever, whatever that song, that, and that was the Thad's last time with Oxcord. Yeah, yeah. Thank God he, he he's got better. Yeah, we're going. You know, he, we go to the same concerts together. Or, you know, same style concerts. So Thad's got better. Mm-hmm. Um, Don found me a beer earlier in the season. He's like, man, if you don't like this one, you're never going to like a beer <laughs> that I'm going to bring you. And it was, he's like, this is the closest one to Bud Light I can ever find. And it was okay. Right. I could drink it. It was okay. Yeah. Stone Cold's beer. Oh. Really? Terrible. What's IPA? Whatever that means. Uh, something pale ale. Whatever <laughs> yeah. I is. So I told him, I said, you know what, man? I don't drink when Waylon's here. I was like, but we're an hour and a half before kickoff, which means we're going to be here for the next five hours. I said, we'll I, try I think I'm going to have this one beer. Oof, I didn't. Didn't have all of it. <laughs> I didn't. I had one. I had one initial sip. Mm-hmm. Then it was still the liquid was still at the top of the like inside of the like tab. The, the tab was still hanging inside. down. Yeah. yeah. And I thought, okay, well, this is terrible. Yeah. Then I said, basically, a hold your nose and chug uh-huh. deal. Did Don like him? Uh, I don't know that he particularly liked that one as well. He finished his, right? And I was going to keep the second one he bought me and just put it on shelf, just as a just to see it. keepsake. And uh, I think it ended up getting back in his cooler or Mackie's cooler when we met him. And um, I'm gonna say it's probably in Mackie's belly. Well, I don't know, Mackie. Surely, I don't know if he even drinks that. <laughs> You'll think so. I'd like to keep one. So, Don, if you even end up having another one, bring bring me back. I'm gonna put it on shelf in the man cave, just for. If it ever gets for, wired. For it being stone. Yeah, if it ever gets wired. <laughs> um, but no, it was a... Ended up, ended up getting a stomach bug after the game. I, I thought it was initially... I started feeling Probably bad. beer. I think I thought it was the Hooters we ate. Uh-huh. Rivergate Hooters, man. That's the drizzling shits anymore. Is it? We used to go there a lot after games. Terrible. Terrible service. Uh, I mean, they weren't even that busy, and it was like a 45-minute wait for food. It was Really? Pretty... pretty dis- I mean, it was pretty... pretty Why didn't you go to the one in Nashville? You're, I mean, you were just a lot all, closer to it. Well, it's just got a long way home, kind of. We go well, through yeah. Galton and all that, so just hit that river gate. Uh-huh. Used to be, it used to be, used to be a tradition. Right. Brent and Barry and us, all those guys, we used to just stop kinda, that one. you to kind of skip that tradition from now on. Yeah, I think I'm done with that place. It was disgusting. But anyway, Lindsay had said her and Bayless had both been sick that day, but they ended up going to, have, having to, go to work the next day puking. Oof. Because I, I was out of vacation time and had to be there for Oof. holiday pay. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, I slept. That's a rough one. Later on, I slept for like 15 hours. Or, like one o'clock that day to like seven the next morning. <laughs> wow, you uh, you did have it. I took a finger and put a bunch of clothes on and yeah, sweat out, sweat that junk out. I thought I had the flu the day before. Uh, Kara was supposed to have Eli 
I went to the doctor and I did not have the flu. I just had some kind of stomach bug. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't mess around. Like I, my grandma, my grandpa and his family keep those vinegar in on stash. Uh-huh. I don't mess around. Yeah. If I feel that shit coming on, just get it coming out. Coming out. <laughs> I just, just get it out. Take one of them and. Mm. Uh. Um. Hey, we need to. I guess we talk about the Justin Wells concert for, Probably for need one. To. Just to touch on it, because we got a lot of decade stuff coming up. Yeah. And I want to say that the turkey that you brought me from JB's was fantastic. Yeah, I was going to ask you. It was really good. Yeah, little Mackie had what, to go ask for favors and get with him one, too. Well, the law. He said, you see what I got? I love Mackie and his vague text. Uh-huh. If there's ever a vague texter in the world, it's Jeremy Mackie. Mm-hmm. Know what? I, you always have to say, instead, instead of saying, you see what I got, then send me the picture. You, you I, I have it. to fucking send the text back and say, what? What was it, Mackie? Yeah. And it's then, he sends, then he sends me the picture. <laughs> God damn, he kills me. Uh-huh. Man, it was great, wasn't it? Oh, God, it was good. The skin was perfect on it. That's how you can tell a turkey's going to be good, is if they get the skin right. Because they, if it's still like fat, jiggly, yeah. that ain't good. But this one was perfect. What well, old gore, man? What'd like, you cool. call it? The um, A drunken turkey? Drunken smoked turkey or... I forget how they word it to me. Now that's how I'm, in my mind. Drunken smoked turkey. Boy, it was good. Smoked drunken turkey. Or yeah, something. And I got it to myself too. That's a Kara didn't full uh-uh. with it. She didn't full with it. She was she she was afraid that the turkey, the combination of the turkey or the beer or one might like, throw off breastfeeding. Throw off breastfeeding. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Got to live life dangerously sometimes, Kara. Yeah, not when you got a screaming infant. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I likened that to the whole, like, uh, my whole family. Like, the, the one time that I took the four quarts of moonshine to the yeah. to the African-American taxi driver yeah. in the first part of this decade. And uh-huh. Called him back, and I said, how did how'd that treat you? He goes, you got my whole family drunk in Clay County. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and then so that I, my whole family ate that. I took it to Turkey, because the next day we had my dad's Christmas. Right. I just took it down. Yeah. We warmed it back up and took it down for I ate main. that. I ate that Joker cold, and it was good. Oh. I love cold turkey straight out of the refrigerator. Mm. I, that's my favorite, man. Like turkey sandwiches the day after Thanksgiving yeah. is the best. Yeah. Well, you changed my mind on one instance, Barry, but now you've set a standard. Like now, now I'm probably going to hate turkey even more. Then that, that's why he got, give us those, right? Right. Did, did you know the, the story behind it? No. Because we bitched about turkey on this podcast. Oh, really? Well, that, hey, boy, he did it right. <laughs> yeah. He figured it out. But he, but he, but he kind of ruined it. Because you, I mean, because I don't you got want, a standard now. Yeah, because I'm not now. Everybody, I'm like, oh well, okay. It's yeah, not, I tell you what, a smoke drunk turkey is really good. Yeah, no, I appreciate it because he he had all that food and. Uh, you know what's weird is that the thing about turkey is you know, it, a lot of times you it's just dry. Most people that do it, it's just dry yeah, as hell. That's why, man. I, that one was not even dry cold out of the refrigerator. No, nah, it was good. It was really good. Mm-hmm. And I took actually we took a lot of our food, man. We really got to get people eating at these concerts. It's twelve bucks. Right. I'm not going. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. I'm literally just going to say, if, if you're going to eat, eat at the concert. Eat the concert. I'm not going to harp on it, just because yeah. these 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 guys made a lot of food, and I, and I I told them not to not expect as many people because I don't I didn't think it was going to be as big. Uh, just I don't know. I, I get it. I I didn't eat. I didn't eat till after it was over because I I got. Too I much can't shit. eat. I can't eat at them because. Uh, in those situations, my tummy's a little messed up anyway. Yeah, I'm always a little nervous at the yeah. shows. So, um, but if you're just there to see the show, your tummy oughtn't be messed up. Yeah, it shouldn't be. So just eat because I mean they they had like so much food, like they could have felt fed the Salvation Army. Left, you know, man, and that food's too good to go to waste and yeah. work and anyway. But Justin went home with some food, and Ryan went home with some food, and we went home with some food. So we warmed them plates up the next day, and I ate them loaded mashed potatoes, and I ate it. Ate, ate it. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I ate it in ribs. <laughs> uh, it's good stuff, man. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you to Barry and Jeanette for hooking us up with a special side turkey. Side turkey. Boy, it was good. How did Mikey wind up with the side man, turkey? He, they got drunk together. He, oh, next thing you he, know. he kept Barry out till uh, and Mackie calls me at 8.15 in the morning Titans game. Where you at? I'm red bowling. I guarantee it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. So somebody hadn't been to bed, I see. Yeah. By God, I went to bed about four forty five. <laughs> Eight fifteen. So I can't wait to see you at the game. Yeah. Barry said, I hope he feels like shit. And I said, Ah, he probably won't. No. Hey, he's immune to that. <laughs> but uh, thank you to our sponsors for the show. Johnson Auto Parts, Lisa Fox, uh 
like I said, once again, go see her. We, uh, she's on Highway 56 there going into Gainesboro. She can help, help you up with a... Going uh, into Gainesboro, coming from Cookville. Yep. Thank you for going that. Going out of Gainesboro the other way. If you're on this side of town, I don't guess anybody else is on this side of Gainesboro, though, are they? I don't know who's listening to this, Lucas. Yeah, that's true. You never know. Yep. Anyway. So between Gainesboro and Baxter. Yep. And uh, nice lady. She supports what we're doing. So we uh, we uh, we want you to stop in and see her. You want to shop local, and she's got everything at a reasonable price down there. Like yep. Even Lucas said in that, that day, welding supplies and all. So yeah, everything. Check her out. Just make sure you, you never know what they, what they got down there until you check them out and see. But. I always suggest going local. When I- <clears throat> it, they've got some really, not odd stuff, but stuff that you think, well, nobody's ever going to have that. We had an old old truck that had a random headlight bulb or a random taillight bulb because it had a flatbed on it. And they had that stuff. You know, they just yeah. got random. What you would, What I would think of is like, there's no way in hell they're going to have that. But they did. But that's kind of like a country store in general. Like, right. you know, like the little man stuff. You ever go to these little stores? I, you, you think, oh, hell, like, they've got that. <laughs> That's kind of what, why I was at Fox. I thought, hell, they've got everything. Uh, and uh, got to brag on the boys, RPM Sound, Dylan Martin, uh, his brother Dalton played guitar in the band. But those guys, now, I don't, I, I'm so, they had a big crew down there that day. Now, they they done it upright. Now, Barry built a fire. Uh-huh. These boys was hauling in their equipment when I got there that day. Uh-huh. And I didn't think we was ever going to catch a fire because they brought their whole setup down there that day. The whole because they played the full band performance before right. with the uh, rigid class, and they brought everything. And Dylan's very proud of his setup. He's like, "Well, I hope you." And it wasn't like looking for my approval. Like it was more like knowing he did a good job, <laughs> knowing it looked good. And he's like, "Well, that 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 live up your expectations." I went, "Good job, kid. Yeah, <laughs> good job, man." She said, "It's all right." No, he, he did all right. He, they did very good. That. When Justin Wells and Ryan Davis didn't come to me and say, "Hey, man, what the hell is this?" You know, <laughs> right. I didn't. Hear, I didn't hear a word, which means that's a good thing. Yeah, Zach Pennington for doing my videos. Um, I'm probably never going to get a physical copy of them, <laughs> <laughs> but he does a really, really good job. I, I can, I can definitely recommend Zach Pennington. Now he's he's he, every time he sees me, like I'm still working on your stuff. But what happens is he got such a large file for me. Uh-huh. It's taking longer to find ways to get me a copy but right. he's done a wedding yesterday look like he's done a fantastic job so um so shout out to everybody that helped you know rigid class did a good job now i missed a lot of rigid classes um say they did about five or six songs up there full uh-huh. rock, rock band but a lot of people you know chris moon kept coming up to me and said man these guys are good these guys are good a lot of people that like rock right i would rock. say that's probably chris's right up chris's alley too wouldn't mm-hmm. it? but i was that's a lot of times you know how busy the early show Did he up. say anything about the sound and stuff? Because he used to run sound. Yeah, no. Nah, now if Andy Smith was there, he'd probably say something, <laughs> right? You know, because he does still run sound, right? Um, but no, I, I, it's too early, early in the show like that. I'm still running around helping do this, do that. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to go back and listen to their performance. Now, Rye done. I think Rye was better the second time, maybe than it was the first time. You think he was a little bit more comfortable, maybe? Maybe or something. God, he was just so good on the microphone. He he got up there and done his little John Anderson impression on swinging. He just I don't know, he he felt even when they left, you know, I was I was shaking his hand and I went to shake Brandy's hand, his wife, and she's like, No, nope, bring it in. <laughs> we're at in that point. Hug. And I was like, Oh shit, we're we're tight. We're pretty much family at this point, you know. So Rye's parents were back and that's uh no, those those are good people, all four of those Brandy, Ryan and Rye's parents. That was and I I think the parents love coming just as much as they do. <laughs> they, they really seem like but he, he did a, he did a great job, and he of course he told that story he told on the podcast. He said, "I met I was back and sitting with Justin at the back, uh-huh. and as he we kind of Justin got there kind of not really late, but about six thirty, uh-huh. like right when the opening band was kind of getting started. So he had to set up everything. So we finally just got sitting down for a few minutes and talk by ourselves in the back. And Rye was telling a story about Justin. He goes, "I met him. He stood up. And hell, he kept standing up. <laughs> yeah. you know, I think he told that on the podcast. <clears throat> yeah." And but now Justin did really good. He, uh, you know, I was a little concerned with, like I said, our crowd expecting something different than what, than what he might bring. Bring just, uh-huh. just with his lyrics and his. He, like I said, he's not going to cover. I tried to. I tried to forewarn. He's not going to stop and do swinging like of John Anderson, like Riot was doing. He's right. not going to do a lot of that songs. But I thought he. I thought his personality would would be perfect, and it was. Uh huh. You know, did he? Did he? Do the dogs. Oh yeah, he done the dogs. Actually, he he changed the lyric to where it says, 
the band asked me not to curse no more. He changed it to, and uh, Dustin asked me not to say fuck no more. <laughs> so, uh, very, very, um, very charismatic. Oh, yeah. He said, you know, uh, I told before he got on there, I did an introduction. And I said, you know, I said, hey, guys, I just want to, want to tell you, I know this is about music, but we also do a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, called uh, One Lane Road Podcast. It's actually free to download, and uh-huh. uh, it's a little show where Lucas talks a lot about sports that he doesn't know anything about. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and I said everything. I said, well, one of the things we do is push guys like this and all this and kind of plugged our podcast along the way as yeah. well. And then I had somebody come up to me and say, boy, that was a big show, wasn't it? I said, yeah, that, that, was, that was a big one for a person. I said, no, I, I said it wrong. The guys in that show were really big, weren't they? I said, yeah. yeah. I said, yeah. Monsters. Yeah. Did you see that picture of me next to those guys? No, oh, I Jesus didn't. Christ. Yeah. Um, Let me see it. And then, uh, so anyway, I said, if you hadn't noticed, I said, there's a banner back here. It says, Lucas DK, we're, we're missing half of this equation. I said, Lucas had a kid six days ago, seven days ago now. I said, you know, priorities and shit. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, you know, he <laughs> put priorities over. Uh-huh. And, um it would have just been a real ah. Uh, Justin hit us with the deal out here out there too. Yeah, the, the, yeah. You mean the the look at the circle and get punched by your friends or the <laughs> or the white supremacist? Yeah, sign. The look at the look at the circle get punched by your friends. Boy, you are that looks like that. Um, <clears throat> you remember that picture that's got the rock in it? It's got Shaq and uh, Charles Barkley. In yeah, it too. That's what you look like right there. Like Charles Barkley? No, you look like Shaq. Or, uh, I'm sorry, you look like The Rock in that one because The Rock's like 6'5, 265, and then Charles Barkley and Shaq are like seven foot plus on both of them. Anytime that you call me The Rock, it's music's in my ears, really. Yeah. I mean, we, we've been mistaken for each other a couple times. Yeah. Boy, they are big units, aren't they? Just yeah, monsters. They are. They're, they're both of their chins are literally over your head. Isn't that crazy? Uh-huh. I'm not a small guy. Yeah, you're not little. I mean, it's not like you're. I'm not a big guy. But I'm not it's a not small like you're guy. Mackie. You know? Yeah. No, thank God. Mackie, it would be that pr- picture would be inappropriate with Jeremy with Jeremy <laughs> Mackie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it would. Yeah, I mean that would be like the bad start to a. I love so much that uh, he hit us with the delay right there. Yeah. I actually had somebody message me and said, hey, um, that, that symbol Justin Wells has given in that picture. And you should have said, shut up right now. Yeah. Yeah. And they said, I don't know if you know it, but it was on the news the other night for a white supremacy thing. I did went. You say, did you say for the last 45 years, though, it's meant, I'm going to punch you in the arm Yeah. if you look at this. I said, did you never have Connie Dillay in class? Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's not what it means. That circle literally means, oh, shit, I got you. I got you. Punch in the arm. X, X your, I X your arm. I punch it. I wipe it off that way because if you don't wipe it off, you can get me You're back. You're going to get me back. That's what it means. That's all it means. Uh-huh. Boy, Justin Wells is a big old happy unit, ain't he? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> big smiling. That's funny. It's a good show, though. He he uh, ended the show. Remember how when Jason and Courtney, at the end of the show, they uh, they dropped the guitar line and yeah. they just sung and the lights dimmed down? Justin done the same thing. And he's like, he's like, I want to uh, play the biggest country badass or the biggest outlaw badass in the history, um, Sir Elton John. <laughs> he said, man, I, and that's what he said. He said, uh, um, I just found out Lucas had, through Dustin had just had his baby. So congratulations to Lucas and his old T-shirt girl from Tompkinsville, Kelly Ann, uh-huh. was there with her husband. She just told him she was about to be pregnant with her second kid and he thanked her. You know, congratulations. About to be her. pregnant. I mean, it was that it was that good of a concert. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's about to be pregnant. I'm about to go home and be pregnant with his second kid because <laughs> of your silky voice, you big bastard. Uh, and his daughter was sick at the time, so he had a, he had a jet back to Lexington as soon as right. it was over. But um, he said, "I do a lot of podcasts." He's like, "I promise you, I've never done one where I talked about boys to men." <laughs> I, I feel like it was a success. Oh yeah, yeah. I feel like you and I need to step our, which we can't. I get it. Our hair is what it is. But looking at these two, we need to step our hair game up a little bit. Yeah. Rod Davis looks like a Pantene Pro V model. Yeah, it's beautiful hair. He has got some gorgeous he, hair. He whips it around there when he. Oh, I'd have to imagine if I had hair like that, I'd whip it everywhere. Oh yeah. And Sasquatch, 
sightings probably started back whenever Justin Wells started like <laughs> slinking through the forest, didn't he? Look at that beard. If Grizzly Adams had a beard, he'd look like Justin Wells. Grizzly Adams did have a beard. Oh, oh, okay, I get it now. Tip shit, you dumbass. I'd hate to. I just. I would like to. Uh, I'd like, hate to sneak up on one of them in the middle of the forest. And before anybody asks, who's the next show for the One Lane Road Podcast Songwriter Series? I have no idea. No idea. I mean, don't even have a clue. <laughs> and don't care right now. We'll do it later. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. I did text some people yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Let's probably not do it next month. Yeah, I don't think February or January or February. Either one of them. Let's probably wait a little while. Get a little time in there. All right, Jace. Give everybody a little time. Yeah, February is actually one I was shooting for just because of who I text. Yeah, but we'll see. It's the end of February. Yeah, but I don't think it's gonna happen. You got to deal with booking agents. Not. I don't want no part of that. Yeah. Um. My wife's birthday is at the end of February, so you know. Be careful. Yeah. Oh, okay. What what date? Twenty fifth. The date I was looking for was twenty first. <laughs> um. Yeah, you got to join us. And you've been out from that last, last two. two. Yeah. One lane road podcast featuring featuring Lucas and DK. Without Lucas. Featuring Lucas DK. <laughs> Without Lucas. Um. I got to gloat for a minute. If anybody can, you can. Yeah. I don't have to worry about setting my football roster today, my fancy football roster, because um, out of uh, two out of the last three years, you're looking. That's a champ. Well, I'd go as far as even saying the great American <laughs> poet John Cena when he said, the champ is here. Uh-huh. You're looking at him, baby. So what you're saying is you don't have to worry about it because you're so far ahead. No, it's because it's, it's over. Oh. Because okay. I want it. Uh-huh. I grasp it. I got up and got that. Brass ring. Yeah. I've got it. Not Curtis Rich. He ain't even in the equation. Mm-mm. Not Jeremy Mackey with his 250 less points than everybody else in the playoffs because he had a had a record. You know, I'm out here losing. I'm out here losing matchups when I'm scoring 140. Jeremy Mackey's winning matchups 86 to 79. You proud of that, Mackey? You sneaking in the playoffs, winning 86 to 79? Who's you're, proud of that? Your mediocre ass. Not John Godwin. He didn't win it. Not Matt Brockett, who won maybe one game. Not Blake Allen. Not DK. Morgan Hensley. DK did. You know who else didn't win it? Derek Rich didn't win it. That's right, Derek. <laughs> when, you're, when you're listening to this, Derek Woolbright didn't win it. Cody Bean didn't win it. James Hatcher. No, you know who won it? DK. And that, you know what? I'm not bragging because I'm a prick. I'm bragging because I'm a humble prick. Yeah. Because I'm humble. Let me anything. just slow clap you a little bit. You know who I am, Lucas? I'm the guy on draft day that when everybody else had drafted their teams, because we do auction, right. we get $200 fictional money, Uh huh. and you have to spend that money wisely. You know mm-hmm. what I did? They laughed at me when I spent $63 on Christian McCaffrey. Uh huh. You just spent $63 of your $200 on one player. You say I'm crafting a team. Number right? one running back in fantasy uh. this year. Number one player overall, other than maybe Lamar Jackson. I don't know who ranked one, who ranked two. Then I spent twenty four dollars on Derrick Henry. They laughed at me. Oh, he, he, he. All he did was score touchdowns. Uh, that's eighty seven dollars of your two hundred. Was it worth it? I don't know. You tell me. When I just got them hundred, 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 hundreds the other day. Uh. but you know what? You know where the come up was at? Where? When everybody really laughed at me. Tell me. At the end of the draft, and everybody was already projecting their lineups. I had five empty roster spots. You know why? Because I blew my load on on Christian McCaffrey, Derrick Henry, Travis Kelsey, Deshaun Watson. You know who my starting wide receivers were? (laughs) Garbage.com. I had five empty bench spots. I had to go up to the board, embarrassed in front of my friends, Uh and pick out five scrubs. So that that, that $100 bills I'm carrying in my wallet, that's a shout out to Justice Hill, Uh Edo Smith, and Deion Lewis. And guys that I had to pick. Yeah, who are these guys? For my dollar picks that's at the end my, of the draft. That's my $5 worth of roster spots. Garbage. It's garbage. It's garbage. Did and they add anything? But you know what happened? They got dropped. Because you know what? I, 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 I do my research. I don't just draft. I just don't show up and draft. Yeah. The top four players in the league was Woolbright, Rich, Hatcher, and myself. 
and who had the most four transactions on the waiver wire week. You got to pay attention. You got to see who gets injured. You got to see who had a breakout performance in week three when nobody else was watching. You got to watch those waiver wires, baby. Uh-huh. You got to pick them up. You got you got to stay on that waiver wire. And you you don't have to play with Justice Hills. You don't have to play with Deion Lewis. Trade them. Drop them. You drop them. Drop them like it's hot. And you pick up all these guys. Nobody seen Anthony Miller coming along. I did. <laughs> you know, even in my mediocrity on draft day, I drafted Jamison Crowder and Anthony Miller. I dropped them because they were garbage at the first uh-huh. of the season. But you know who won me? Who were in my championship lineup? Week, uh, week, week 16. Anthony Miller had got picked back up uh, off the waiver wire, off my craftiness of uh, watching the waiver wire. Uh, Jamison Crowder, uh, I picked you back up because I had faith in you in week one. Yeah. Here it is. I'm the champion. Champ. Two out of three years. Austin champ, style champ. champion. Champ. Champ, champ. Double champ. My condolences go to Derek Rich on the absolute worst soul-crushing loss I've ever seen in my life in a play. Like he lost Derek Wilbrot like 124.4 to 124.26. Or, I mean, Oof. It's like a point two six difference, whatever it was. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know what? Even on week one, when I lost 180 to 171, everybody had to go hear me bitch for weeks. Uh-huh. I lost a matchup. Curtis Rich is like, oh, no, I lost so-and-so. It's not the same. I said, it's not the same. You lost by scoring 90. I scored 171 and lost. It ain't, it's not the same. <laughs> right. Shut up. Uh-huh. And then as the season went on, everybody else was beating me in the brackets, and I'm in fourth place. I go in the playoffs. I go in the playoffs as a lowly, bottom of the barrel, Poor piss four seed. Uh, Stacks uh, odds were against me. Clean up hitter. Here, Woolbright and Hatcher got their little first round buys. I had to go. I had to go all the way to Clark Range and beat John Godwin on the road. Uh, uh, got, I got past this. Then I looked at James and I said, "All right, James, you've put together a pretty good roster. Are you the Are you the champion? Are you championship material? I don't know. Let's just have at it here. Who had Julian Edelman? Who cares?" <laughs> <laughs> not me. Not a championship roster. Right. Not on the roster. He don't even on my roster. Right. I had garbage receivers. I didn't have Julian Edelman. Uh-huh. Nobody cares. Right. You know, I'm all about living my life with Anthony Miller and uh-huh. Jamison Crowder and Mike Williams non touchdown catching ass until like week thirteen. Like I stuck with these receivers because I had no better options. But when you have two of the top three running backs in the game, uh-huh. you don't need wide receivers. My tight end was my wide receiver one. Really? That's it. Travis Kelsey was my wide receiver. Uh-huh. James, you put up a, va- a, a valiant effort. But at the end of the day, you knew you weren't a champion. This is not in your blood. Derek Woolbright, I, I have to be honest here right now. Had I not picked up a defense off the waiver wire, uh-huh. I'd rocked with the Tennessee Titans defense all year. But I knew playing the Saints, it probably wasn't a good matchup to go trust the defense on hopping around with a bunch of injured cornerbacks and safeties. So I went to the waiver wire. Uh huh. I picked up the Indianapolis Colts defense, and they scored 30 points for Oof. me. Oof. That's nice. No, in all seriousness, no way in hell I would have beat Derek Woolbright if I didn't know. He, he had a better week than me. I had, I had some players. Derek Henry didn't play for me. Uh huh. But you know what? Woolbright's like, if anybody, you know, Woolbright had basically tr- chugged along all year. Uh huh. Because of a defense. He had the Patriots defense, which was killer all year long. He's like, well, it's only right with karma, I guess, that I lose because of a defense. Uh huh. But I mean, it's just how fickle fancy football can be. I was looking at the waiver wire, and I said, I can either get Indy or I can get Atlanta. And I kept going back and forth. Even after I picked up Indy, I almost dropped them for Atlanta because they were playing a worse team. Uh huh. But then I thought, well, Indy's playing a Will Greer quarterback who's never started a, a, a game in his life, never threw an NFL pass. Uh huh. God, if I didn't go with him, I never would have won. Huh. Makes it worth it. Makes it worth it to win. So the rest of you losers, come back next year. I'll take your money again. You think they'll even come back after you've you know, dominated them twice like this? It's hard to tell. They'll probably it's just, be. They'll it's just probably a little be, early to say, isn't it? It'll probably be a little bit of a turnover rate. Yeah. They'll be the, the regulars to come back. Our heavyweights at the top, James and both Derek's. They'll be there. John will probably be there. You know, our, our heavyweights will hang out at the top. They'll come back, challenge the crown. Mm-hmm. Mackie will be there. I got to say, Mackie, you know, Mackie's most time the bottom of the barrel cellar dweller. <laughs> but he hung out and made the playoffs. 
worst roster I've ever seen make a playoff. But but he made it. He made it. Yeah. So <clears throat> is Julio Jones still good? He's awesome. Is he? I don't know shit about football, really. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, you got to watch him waiver wire, son. Yeah. Okay. Fancy football. I don't. I don't know anything about it. Yeah, you were trying. Somebody was trying to get me to play at the beginning of the year, just to just to be in the mix. I think it was, was two, it two years ago. Two years ago, you said I'll even help you with the uh, with all the stuff. I couldn't be bothered with it. <laughs> I just <laughs> I thought, no, I'm not going to do this. <coughs> I'm glad you won, though. Thank you. I feel like I win because you won. Yeah. Well, Is that you know, fair to say? I give the glory to God. Yeah. All glory goes to God. <sighs> First of all. Let's just stop and thank Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Yeah. You know, shout out to him and the orphans. Man. The orphans. Absolutely. I played for the orphans. What are we about to do on this internet, cuz? Let's do it. This is not only. So last last game we had, the end of 2019 review. We're going, we're going above and beyond this week. Hell no. We're not just worrying about 2019. We're worrying about the 2010s. Let's get them. Uh, they're, they're gone. Here in just a few days, Wednesday. It's a new decade. It's new us. New, new me, new you. Are you making any? Uh, we talked about this last week. Did we? Or two weeks ago? Yeah, I'm not. We're not. I, we're not. Okay. No. Nope. What? Uh, what uh, but we do need to remember the tens. And there's there's a couple different ways we can do that. We've got um, a lot of uh. A lot of passing away. You do you want to cover the yeah. solemn? The, <laughs> Let's do the sad part first. Uh, Don Imus just passed away the other day. He, uh, he's uh, you might remember him from saying "nappy headed hoes." He started the whole uh, started the whole thing there. Yeah, you, if, if you're if you're upset because the whole world's politically correct, Don Imus kind of got he that. He kind of started that by calling the Rutgers basketball team a bunch of nappy headed hoes. And uh, so he uh, he's gone, and he kind of started the whole thing. King Kong Bundy passed away this year. The rest of King Kong Bundy? Yeah. Passed away this this year. Did he really? Right there it is. King Kong Bundy. Let's, That's see, right there. let's see when. March 4th in Glassboro, New Jersey. I don't even remember that. Yep. Uh, Chewy from uh, Chelsea Handler's show. Chewy Bravo. Chelsea Handler. I'm not a, not a fan of that. Renee. Aubrey, I can never could say his name, but he was the changeling from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Little dorkated reference there. It amazed me when I was looking at the 2010s in general. You're looking at 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, how many people died in this decade that I forgot about? Tim Conway, one of the greatest comedians of all time, passed away in 2019. Let's just go through 2019 first. Uh Bob Einstein, which he was a great comedian too. A lot of people, a lot of comedians looked up to him. See any big, big names? Robert Forster. He was Grumpy the Cat. Grumpy the Cat passed away. Sid Haig. He's a um, horror star, isn't he? Yeah. He was in all of uh, Rob Zombie's Rob Zombie's movies. Obviously, Nipsey Hussle. Yeah. Sure. Obviously. Obviously, Nipsey Hussle. Covered him last week. Carl Lagerfeld. Celebrity fashion designer. I don't know any of these people much. Yeah, Peter Mayhew, you will. You'll know his work. He was Chewbacca. Yeah, not really. All right. Uh, Art watched, Neville. Never watched any of those. Luke Perry. There's a big There's one. There's a big one. There it is. That uh, Ross Perot. Ross Perot is a really big one. Uh, Luke Perry, every woman, every woman over the age of 35. That's heartthrob material right there. Loved him. Loved yeah. him. Um, Christoph St. John, uh, literally every woman 70 and under heartthrob. Christoph St. John was a big actor on Young and the Restless and was there for forever. He was, well, come on now. Rip Torn. Rip Torn's a pretty big one. Rip he Taylor. Rip, oh, Rip, well, Torn. Rip Torn. Both of them. Yeah. I, didn't, I can't make it sit still. <laughs> so where'd you see Rip Taylor? Oh, yeah, right there. Rip Taylor. I didn't know that. And then a big one right here, John Witherspoon, the the yep. longtime comedian, uh, uh, most remembered probably in this generation by the Friday movies. <laughs> 35, put, 45 minutes. Better put some water on that shit. <laughs> uh, there's Juice World. 
Legend. Without the O. Yeah. Yep. So yep. that, that rounds Michael it out it. in 2019. Let's see, let's see who uh, Celebrity Deaths of 2010. Or the two twenty. Here's the list I've pulled up while you're Googling it on the, on the big screen. Amy Winehouse. Yeah. Um, one, became another one of those performers, just like uh, thank Kurt Cobain and uh, Jimi Hendrix and uh, shit, there's another female, uh, Janis Joplin. Janis Joplin that died at 27. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Whitney Houston, one of the best voices, you know. Of course, started liking that cocaine a little hard in her life, but man, no. crack cocaine. But her, uh, man, her her rendition of "I Will Always Love You" obviously just one of the, uh-huh. one of like, just sit back and say, "Damn," uh-huh. you know, just how good. Um, Prince, Prince, that's a big one, really big one. Got caught up in that fentanyl. Yeah, he died. He died as soon as our podcast started. Like he had just died when our podcast started. Robin Williams, that's a big one. Again, man, Robin Williams. Uh, there's still people taking that Robin Williams death hard. Uh huh. Me. Uh, Tom Petty, one of the bigger rock and roll names. Today. David Bowie, that was a big one. Oh, I forgot about him. Uh, uh, Paul Walker passed yeah, away for 2013. My, for my money, I wish they'd have never done another Fast and Furious movie after Paul Wa- Paul Walker died. I mean, I love The Rock, but it's Paul yes. Walker and Vin Diesel is where it's at. Yeah, that's that's the. Uh, he was kind of the big hitter. He had uh, got one of them fast cars and like Paul had Walker bad tires. He, I mean. He liked those movies, and he died in one of those fast cars. And he's just one of those people. Like I'm not, I, I'm not like I'm not a GQ model by any stretch of imagination. But, but just, he's a handsome son of a bitch. Like the most. Like you just look at a dude. Like you just look at Paul Walker. Like, that's a damn. Like, that's a that's a good looking dude. And you automatically, I feel ugly. Yeah. Oh yeah. I just yeah. automatically just know I'm ugly as shit. Right. And Chris Cornell right here passed away by suicide, unfortunately, but. Anybody that's ever had thoughts of singing, whenever you hear Chris Cornell sing, you go, Ooh. "Oh, oh, that if that's what singing is, I can't, I can't do that." He's big time. Chris Cornell, awesome voice. Yeah. Oh, Anthony Bourdain, I forgot about him too. Anthony Bourdain, that was a big one. I always loved that guy. Leonard Nimoy, Spock. Oh yeah, live long and prosper. I hadn't seen him outside of the Spock. Um, Chuck Berry. Yeah. Passed away for Johnny B. Good. He passed away in 2017. Said David Bowie, uh, Mary Tyler Moore. Man, it's a lot of a uh, uh-huh. lot of big Valerie names. Harper, both from Mary Tyler Moore show. Luke Perry, like we said. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher. There you go. Star Wars. Princess Leia. All these boys in the seventies and eighties and nineties remember Princess Leia wrapped up in uh, that little gold. Oh yeah, little gold gown. Wow. Meow. Uh, BB King, a big, you know, obviously a big blues guy uh, from Mississippi, big time in Memphis and Nashville, both uh, country in the country music world, no bigger than Merle Haggard and George Jones, both. I went to George Jones's funeral. Uh huh. Jesus Christ! Oh, Carrie Fisher per- had it, didn't she? Yeah, boy, Carrie Fisher was the thing in the seventies, buddy. Merle Haggard di- died from complication of pneumonia on his birthday. Mm. And then George Jones, yeah, I went to that funeral, and I actually was at home last night when after everybody went to bed, I watched parts of George Jones' funeral that I was at where uh, Vince Gill and Patty Lovell sing Go you know, Rest High on that Mount Allen Jackson sings. Um, he Stopped Loving Her Today, just an awesome uh, ceremony. Mm. Bill Paxton. Mm. Remember Twister? Yeah, I didn't know he died. Yeah, yeah, he died in 2017. Aretha Franklin. Mm. You know what the sad thing about you know, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. don't know what you mean to me. Find out what you mean to Find me. Find out. Natural man. Natural woman. Say a little prayer. Of course, I remember as a wrestling nerd from Vince McMahon at WrestleMania 3 going, Aretha Franklin. Yeah. <laughs> Alan Thick. Everybody's dad from Growing Pains. Everybody, yep. Everybody's dad. Dad. Died playing hockey. Had a aortic. I had a aortic rupture. Yeah. While he's playing hockey with his son, and then apologized for slowing the game down on the gurney. Just a good guy. <laughs> this is a this is an interesting guy, and I'll go back to my Star Trek. Anton Yelchin. He was. Uh, uh, I can't think of what it, he was. The guy in Star Trek. Whenever they did the reboot, 
that was uh, the he was a Russian guy. Hell, I can't think of his name. <laughs> anyway, driving a Jeep Cherokee and uh, walked, parked it, walked down to his mailbox in Hollywood, and the Jeep jumped out of gear and ran him into his mailbox oh, and gate. Boy, it sure, dad, go. That was just a freak accident. Wow. Yeah. Unfortunate. George Michael. Joan Rivers. Burt Reynolds. Scott Weiland from Stone Temple Pilots and Velvet Revolver, we also talked about. Uh-huh. Accidental overdose in December 2015. Rapper Mac Miller died of an accidental drug overdose. Got that cocaine laced with fentanyl. I swear to God, I never knew who he was until he died. Why? Oh, really? Nah, he had that. that Donald Trump. He had a Donald Trump uh, rap that was pretty funny. James Gandolfini. Everybody loved the Sopranos. That loved the Sopranos knows him. Casey Kasem. Passed away in 2014. Casey Kasem in the countdown. You remember the countdown? Oh, yeah. Take you t- hey, we're old enough, y'all, that I learned it from my no, sister. Casey Kasem. Casey Kasem. And that, did I say it wrong? No. Oh, then I put it. you put the tape in the in the radio, get <laughs> yeah. that record. You get that top 40. You got to get the Thunder Rolls when it comes on, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. Chattahoochee had that on recorded tape. Gene Wilder, obviously known for Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, mm-hmm. but I... I Blazing Saddles, at least. I would say Blazing oh, Saddles, kind of the the big thing there. Cameron Boyce, this was a weird one. He was, I I knew I only knew him because of my sister because she was so young. This this man was really young. He's twenty year old. Uh, he had epilepsy and died. Gosh, am I might have died from a seizure while he was sleeping. Hmm. Twenty years old. He was a big Disney star. Penny Marshall, I remember yep. her from the Laker game. She's always courtside. Gary Coleman, what you talking about, Willis? What you talking about, Willis? Shirley Temple. Dick Clark. Dick Clark, when did he die? He died at 82 year old in April of 2012. Okay, I knew he was dead. I just couldn't remember how many years ago. I didn't realize Corey Heyman died. He died right in 2010. That... Troubled actor. That's mm-hmm. Corey Heyman and Corey Feldman. They were always. Always tied together and will forever be, I guess. Oh, the Beastie Boys co founder. I can't, I don't, good luck with his last name. Well, then. 2012. Mandy McCready. Yeah. Suicide. Which, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-uh-uh. Michael Clark Duncan died back in 2012. Suffered a heart attack, 54 years old. He was the great big unit in the Green Mile. He was uh, <laughs> the guy who said, don't put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Donna Summer. Uh-huh. She works hard for her money. She worked hard for it, honey. She worked hard for her money. Uh, Stan Lee, that's uh, big with all the nerds in the world. Uh, this guy. No, it, you can't, it goes like all of it. It goes without saying. While, while leading Marvel Comics, Stan created, co-created Spider-Man, X-Men, Iron Man, Thor, the Hulk, Fantastic Four, Black Panther, and more. Pretty good resume. Pretty big resume there. Got, uh, got in bad shape. I think gave away a lot of his money to people that he... Didn't mean to as he got a little older. Don Didn't Asbury. Take advantage of him. Got to meet him long and, before he died. Andy Griffiths passed away in 2012. 86 yeah. years old. If anybody don't know, like the Andy Griffiths. I'm, saying, I'm not even going to explain who he is. Florence Henderson. Old Carol Brady of the Brady Bunch. Oh, I didn't know she passed away. 2016. You forget these things so easily. Uh huh. 82 year old. You're li- we this- come and we go. Leslie Nielsen. Boy, I. He. I mean, he oh, had a. Yeah. Direct line to my funny bone, man. Those Naked Gun movies. Airplane. Yeah. Gosh, Those Naked funny. Gun movies are so funny. Yeah. Everybody kind of forgets that he was a he was a very serious actor up until he wasn't. And oh, then really? he made his best movies after he decided to not be such a serious actor. Yeah. I think, anyway. Those were great. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't know who that one was. Ah, David Cassidy. Old Partridge family. Battling liver disease. Must have had a little bit of a drinking problem. George Bush died at 94 back in 2018. Neil Armstrong, the man, first person to walk on the moon, and uh, died following heart surgery in August uh, 2012. Hugh Hefner died September 2017. The uh, architect for most <laughs> young men's foyer into yeah, I adulthood. Mean, if you, I mean, come on. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's Hugh Hefner. If you if you're if you're a grown man listening to this podcast and you never looked at the Playboy, you're lying. You're a liar. Nate Dog, 
who also looks like Uncle Jerome, Shaq's bodyguard. <laughs> First time I ever met Shaq's bodyguard, Uncle Jerome, I said, Nate Dog. Or I said, Uncle Jerome. He looked at me and I said, How many times have you ever been called Nate Dog? But boy, if you wanted to, in the 90s and 2000s, if you wanted a hook saying on a rap song, Nate Dog did it. Nate D O Double G was your man. Uncle Jerome, I've never seen. You got to you got to type in Uncle Jerome Shaq. That's the only way he's gonna pop up. Wow. Well, that's not him. I don't know who that is. I say that doesn't look anything like Nate Dog. No, that's not him either. Huh? It's funny how it popped up on Google, then it actually didn't. Then none of this is him. Type in Shaq's bodyguard. Huh. Bodyguard. God knows he needs one. Yeah. The only thing that anybody needs to guard him from is so boy, looks like. There he is. Right here? Yeah. No, that, that does look like him, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't look to be dressed for a bodyguard, but. <laughs> wow, one picture of him. Well, I don't know one how. One picture. That's, that's crazy. Um, that's a. Uh, What's more impressive is that you knew what he looked like because apparently there's no pictures of him anywhere on the internet. <laughs> well, he's always the guy that sat on the bench behind Shaq for years and years, no matter where he went and played. Uh, oh, Steve Jobs. Yeah, he's kind of big for this generation. Yeah, I'd have to say the creation and Apple too, iPod, iPhone, Alan Rickman. All that. Most people will remember him from Harry Potter's as Severus Snape, but you may also remember him from taking over the hotel and uh, that. Bruce Willis was trying to take back in Die Hard. <laughs> Which has apparently been voted one of the greatest Christmas movies of all time. I don't know why it's such a big Christmas movie, because they were just having a Christmas party. But <laughs> That's in the debate here lately. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, right there, Don Rickles. That was huge for the comedy community. Died April 2017. One of the biggest comedians of all time, maybe the biggest comedian of all time, had a direct line to... Uh, the Mafia and all those. Uh, he was one of those mob comedians. Flow like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Voted the greatest athlete of the 20th century, according to Sports Illustrated. 22-year-old Muhammad, Muhammad Ali. Ali. Upset. Sonny Liston become the heavyweight champion in 1964. Uh-huh. Died in 2016 of Parkinson's disease. Uh-huh. Arnold Palmer, famous golfer. And the drink that you might have every now and then. Uh, James Garner, a huge actor in... Uh, in the Western community, who's Maverick. Yeah. Maverick in the old black and white, and then he was Maverick's dad whenever Mel Gibson played Maverick in the movie back in the 90s. Oh, Sherman Hemsley. He was George Jefferson. Get on, move on up. Anytime anybody does anything good, they're always moving up like George and Weezy. Mm-hmm. Um, Dennis Hopper, to kind of round this out, Tony Gwynn, Dennis Hopper, um, a lot of baseball players here. Um, Legends, Yogi Berra, Ernie Banks, and Stan Musial. Um, Rue McClanahan, who you would know as Blanche from from Golden the, Girls. Yeah. I was trying to say designing women for some reason. Um, so, you know, Ryan Dunn from uh, Jackass. Jackass. Died in that huge car crash where he was flying. Um Everybody worried about him having that car because, you know, the jackass guys are always known for their ability to be disciplined. Yeah. James Avery played Uncle Phil. I believe that uh, he died in the same car that Paul Walker did. I believe that was both in a Porsche GT2 or GT3 mm. RS. Paul Walker may have been in like a Carrera or something. Stuart Scott, uh, black anchor from ESPN, cooler on the other side of the pillow. Yeah. Call him m- must be butter because he's on a roll. Booyah! Huh? Remember, remember Stuart Scott from when you were a kid? Uh, you have to scroll it back down. Did it again, did you? Remember Stuart Scott? Oh, yeah. Big influence on uh, ESPN. Glenn Fry. Gary Shandling, comedian. Yeah. Man, so many. So many a lot people. of comedians went, went out yeah. this. Dick Gregory, this who I enjoyed. Dick Gregory. Uh, Glenn Campbell. Jeez. All oh. kinds of a uh, Vern Troyer, mini me. Oh gosh, you know, I don't know if it was, uh, I don't know if it's just that all those people were big influences on us, but it seems like there was a lot of people, a lot of celebrities, or there could just be more celebrities now than what there used to be. I get well, you know, I don't, a little bit of both. Maybe. A little, I think the word celebrity is kind of 
lost Banded a little bit, you know, since since we're living in the age of reality stars and uh-huh. and I skipped over several reality stars. Yeah, and that and just the, you know people that get famous off selling product. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, have you ever seen anybody get more famous than the Kardashians that literally have no talent whatsoever? Kim took a D. And Kim, but, Kim and did it so well that she is now a multimillionaire. But did she though? I don't know. Like I like I watched it and she laid there and took just took took it, it from a C list. He wasn't this dude. This dude was oh, only yeah. famous because his sister was famous. And but ha, he literally spawned her career and couldn't make his take off. Yeah, <laughs> she got so rich and famous from that video. And he did all the work. <laughs> well, it's because he's a black man. And once you've seen one black man's thing, you kind of just seen them just... all, I guess, even though I guess they stand out, supposedly. Um, stick up or. Uh, I say stand up or out. I don't, you know, <laughs> but I mean, but at that time, had you ever seen an ass like Had you ever seen an ass like that on a white girl? Well, she's Armenian, but. Yeah, she's not white. Yeah. She's not white. Yeah. But, but I, I mean, on any woman at that time. Oh, gosh, no. You know. Did she kind of start it? Or did J-Lo start it? J-Lo's was J-Lo not. started it. Wasn't hers natural, though? Yeah. Yeah, Kim? nobody had seen that big fake one like that before, had they? Mm-mm. See, I mean. You know. She might have started the big fake ass thing. When, you, when you've got an ass so big that you make a black man's penis look normal. <laughs> you You win. know you're going to the, somewhere. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. But yeah, no, uh, and her sisters are even worse. I mean, the little sisters. I mean, they just the, don't make the them. little one. The little one literally never did anything, and she's going to be the billionaire. She never did anything but sell makeup. She had a famous sister. Now she's a billionaire. So what? When you look back at the two thousand tens, what what's some things that you? Um, well, I got married, had two kids in the tens. Mm-hmm. That's the big things, I guess. So did I. Yeah, we hit our thirties and our tens. Yeah, that's not that big of a. It's a big deal. It's 30s a, is a yeah. big deal. Especially yeah. when you live your life in the 20s. <laughs> I would say it would be more, more. the bigger part would have been my 20s ended in the in the 10s, I guess. If you want to know how bad of our 30s are affecting us, you should have seen the 30 minutes off the, microphone. The previous, <laughs> the, prior to the show, that would have been the, <laughs> that would have been the show. But it that been, might have been the close of the show, actually. They'd have been a lot of praying for you. Yeah. Worrying about you guys. Yeah. Hope you guys are all right. That was the therapy session prior to the therapy session. <laughs> well, it really was. The 30 minutes Jeez, prior to it. Y'all yeah. didn't see nothing. <laughs> we had, Lucas thought he had a bad day till I opened my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, let's, let's get a. There actually was another than eight, 18 things we're going to remember from the 10s. So. And that's just a list that says people think they were going to remember. Yeah. Um, the rise of the smartphone. Can't can't argue with that. Boy, it come in like a wrecking ball. There's something. Have you ever seen anything take over everybody's life like My that? My God, it's so and frustrating. It's not just. It's not just kids. It's everybody. It's literally everyone. We'll tell Waylon to come out do something, and it'll take him forever because he's doing this right here. But yeah. then. And then, I, but I do the same thing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, put your damn phone down. Let me, let exactly. me check. Let me We're check all hypocrites real quick. When it yeah. comes to our phones. Oh God, yeah. But I, I, I remember playing Snake on my Nokia, and you know, I, uh-huh. I remember throwing my razor out the window of I my remember, moving car. I remember networking. carrying. Yeah, I remember carrying a phone and a watch. I never really carried a camera, but I remember. I never. I remember having a phone with a camera in my pocket and thinking, "Man, those pictures are just shit." Right. So I better go get a real camera. But now, the, the camera industry, unless you're a professional photographer, why in the hell do you need one? Because that new phone from Huawei that they're so worried about coming out of from China, it's got like a hundred and fifty megapixel camera on it. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I bought I bought Lindsay a six hundred dollar camera one year for Christmas. And now it's where's it at? I don't know. Who knows? We got a video camera for Christmas. Yeah. While we need it. We got what, what's it for? Um You the literally if you go spend six hundred dollars on a camera, the phone the f- camera on your phone is as good or better than it is. Yeah. The only time I get a little frustrated is when I'm at sporting events. When you really like a big zoom. I'd like it to take a nice camera, but who wants to haul the shit around? I, they're bul- big and bulky. You can throw uh-huh. this thing in your phone. So or in your pocket. We we got everything we need. We've got the internet right here. We've got 
We got email. Boy, that's the biggest thing, man. Having the ability to have everything at your fingertips. Yeah. It's, you it's, got a question about something? It, it does. We try to make it a point. But we're all we're all hypocrites, you know. We're all say, "Hey, are we we're eating dinner without phone?" And yeah, then you say, "Hey, look this up." So real quick, we're even when we're talking. It's I remember like this has been five or seven years ago. Karen and I may have either just got married or whatnot, and there's an older man come over to me. I think about this every time we go to eat. Older man came over to me. He said, "I just wanted, I just wanted to congratulate you two for not staring at your phone. He said, I've sat over there and watched. I don't think you two have even looked at your phone since you've been here. And yeah. He said, I don't think y'all are even 30 yet, so y'all should be knee-deep in them. I was like, well, you know, we're just, we're just having dinner. You should have said, maybe you need to mind your own business, you creep. <laughs> staring at people at dinner. I, I think about that man a lot because now I'll have my phone in my hand while we're eating, and I'll be going, that man would be so disappointed in me right yeah. now. I try to do better around functions. I remember when I very first got my first iPhone, I went to Jeremy Hammer's house in Maryville. He called me out literally all weekend. But I just got the iPhone. Right. Just got it. And it's it was brand new. You know, and but he he called me out. And it pissed me off at the time. Not really pissed me off. But I was like, All right, dude, get off of me. Yeah. You know? Next time I went there, Jeremy had a smartphone. We were sitting at the table and he kept looking at us, Yeah, put your phone up, Jeremy. <laughs> but now I try to do better, like when I'm around, when I, when I visit friends, especially you don't see much or something, just trying to flip it over. Yeah. You know, yeah. Flip that, it over. Put it don't even, I don't even care. I'll just turn the volume off. Just yeah. try not to. Oh, I care. It's got a direct line to my, jerking me back in. It's like, no, your attention belongs over here. Yeah. I don't like it. That's why I keep thinking about going back to a flip phone, but I can't. Because how am I going to look up what the flip phone, what flip phone I'm going to have, if I don't have my smartphone? They're good. They they are good. People, good people, people just need to learn how to manage their time a little better. I get real excited, myself included. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I get real excited whenever I get that uh, that weekly screen time report that says you're down from last week. Yeah, I didn't. I don't know. I didn't look at that. I tell you, I tell you what I want to get next year. You talking about? Uh, you talking about um, New Year's resolutions? Here is one. When Justin Wells said that, um, I think, well, I don't know if he said, I, I can't remember, never mind, but he was, <laughs> I can't remember if he said this on, I think it was off air, so I'm no. not going to repeat it. Uh, we were talking about another musician, just, or this dude ha- basically has a day where he doesn't mess with nobody. Like he turns his phone off and just shuts off everything. Mm-hmm. We all need that a little bit. Oh, yeah. When I had the, when I was sick, People didn't know I was sick, uh-huh. and they were blowing. And people have, just happened to be texting me. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm 36 year old man. Like I'll text. I'm, I'm young enough. I want to text. I don't want to text full conversations. Right. There's some people that will that will text you for hours if you let them. Uh huh. I don't know how they. They're not as busy. Some. I don't let anybody do that to me. No, no. That's what I said. If you let them, yeah. I, I, I don't even do that. I'm there. You know, I'm I'm getting bad about you know I'll I'll, I'll text back a few. Uh-huh. I'm sort of thinking if we're just talking for the sake of talking, I I'm I'm leaving you. I'm I'm gonna cut you. I'm gonna leave you hanging. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm gonna text you back a couple days later and be like, oh my my bad man. But yeah. that day I shut my phone off and I didn't have my phone off for like seven hours. Wouldn't even turn on. Best time of your life. I, don't know, I was asleep. Yeah. But I mean that I'd feel like death. People were texting and it's nothing big deal. I mean I'm I'm glad that. I enjoy their conversation, but I felt like death. And uh-huh. I was like, man, I'm not going to, I'm just not texting. That's a good thing, I think, to shut the son of a bitch off Oh, I, for a little bit. Everybody knows I'm a Rogan head. Uh, he was talking about going hunting, and he got out someplace where he didn't even have service. Yeah. He said, he said his blood pressure went down. You know, <laughs> I thought, wow, imagine that. Yeah. Just not worrying about it. Yeah. I had mine out the other day when we were riding around and, like with the kids. Uh-huh. But I was taking pictures of them on the farm and stuff. Yeah. It's not as bad. But then again, after I got a few good pictures of them, I like put it in my pocket. I was like, okay, now let me just enjoy your company. Yeah. But I still wanted some good pictures of them down there at the farm. I, you know how much that farm means to me. Yeah. I don't get there like I'm used to. But uh, number two, Netflix and streaming. Yeah. Another one. I, I'm i still an old school guy because I'm too sports oriented. I can't cut That's my, the big thing, right? I cut Just my cord. I cut my cord last year like everybody kept telling me to do because I was getting I can't. Uh-huh. I got too many sports. You well, can do it. Amazon I did. Amazon now has live sports. I don't know if they have all the they they only have football as far as I know. It's the only one yeah. I've ever seen. But there's always gonna be something for me. It's always gonna be some hiccup. Right. Yeah, I might get NBA T V but I'm not gonna get NFL network. Right. Uh yeah. Well you might get ESPN too, but you do you have SEC network? No. Would I get Fox Sports East South so I can watch the Grizzlies? No, probably not. It's always something, you know. Right. 
Sports is the big thing. <laughs> that's the once end. once the sports comes over to a streaming app, regular television will be dead. And I think that's why those uh what are like CBS sports or NBC or any of those places. I think that's why they pump so much money into sports because <laughs> yeah. they know that's the thing holding most people there. Mm. Especially when, uh, I mean, that's the, that's the only thing that I can think of where people can still sell like major advertisements is going to a sporting event or, you know, watching a sport. Netflix. Event. And it says Netflix was around before 2010, but didn't get it reliable until after but it's the bay. Like Netflix is all, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. It's the thing. I mean, they got original series. Yeah. You know, like, I tell you what I really like about it is the Amazon original series. Does. Yeah. And um, the thing is, well, and that falls in, like I said, with the, the streaming. streaming. yeah. But, um, you know, we grew up on actual sitcoms. We grew up on yeah. actual dramas, things. When all this reality horse shit took over, it wiped out a lot of episodic television right. that, that mattered. I really love that Netflix is bringing that back. Uh-huh. And you can binge watch the shit out of it if you want, like you and I have talked about on this. And that that's what I think they hold. I mean, yeah, they have all these documentaries. And you notice all these comedians now, they're going straight to Netflix with oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you know that when you watch more stand-up than I do. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's great. And, you, you, and we pay nothing for it, basically. Yeah. Yeah, like, what, $12 a month you're paying <laughs> for it as opposed to, like, what, $60 a yeah, month? you can find what? so much. I watched, like, seven episodes of Longmire. This Longmire's fantastic. Yeah, I'm just getting, just getting to watch it. Yeah. So I had... hey, you know what? Something that I, I went back and watched an old an old show, and I can't remember what it was now, but streaming where you've got the ability to skip the intro. Yeah. People don't even put time into their intro anymore. It's, it's like yeah. three or five seconds, you know, 10 at the most, and then they go on to the show because you're going to skip it anyway. Boy, those old things used to have like two or three minutes worth of an opening. Which also I can appreciate too. It's it's another another thing that's on this list. But I mean, you know, we, we won't have this podcast in ten years talking about best theme songs of the twenty <laughs> twenties, you know, or uh-huh. whatever, because they don't exist anymore. Right. I can still tell you all the Full House and Family Matters and Say by the Veil. You know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, Wonder well. Years. I can still sing the whole Wonder Years. What thing. a damn good song. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, number three, meme culture. Meme started off as image macros and have now evolved to screenshots of tweets. Um, there's a lot of things in this new generation I despise. Mm-hmm. Memes is not one of them. Memes and GIFs. I refuse to call them GIFs. The guy that, I'm disappointed in the guy that created the word. It's GIFs. It should yeah. be GIFs. GIFs of fucking peanut butter. Memes are the funniest thing ever. I got on a, yeah, the I got on a kick of what? Chuck, 20, 2000, 2010s. Or it's actually in the 2000s, but Chuck Norris jokes. God Almighty! Yeah. There's the internet will forever be, forever be the winner. There's some funny people out there, and it happens quick. As soon as something yeah. happens, you got, you know. I remember when Shaq fell on the on the the uh, stage or on the on the set of Inside the NBA, and they had the within 15 minutes they'd send a meme over Randy Orton giving him an RKO. <laughs> you know, as he's falling to the ground. I mean, man, people are unbelievable. With this stuff. Yeah, I love. I mean, memes. You know, I, I even had a few meme makers every now and then. Uh huh. Make them of your buddies and talk shit. Uh huh. But uh, dude, they're they're the best. Man. They are. Hey, this Chuck Norris. I Chuck Norris threw a grenade and killed fifty people. Then the grenade exploded. <laughs> Chuck Norris can cut a hot knife with butter. There's just some funny people out there. Yeah. So big, big fan, big yeah. fan of the memes. When Chuck Norris attends a feminist rally, he comes back with his shirt ironed and a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> People are funny, man. Good, um, dating apps blew up, and uh, oh yeah, we've had some buddies that have been on the dating apps. It used to be what MySpace. MySpace was, but like yeah, I guess the first one that come out was like I remember when Yahoo Personals was a thing. I don't remember that one. You had like you know just I mean you like would, a personal back back. It's the back same page di- ad or whatever. No, it's the same difference as I guess dating sites. Oh. Uh, you just type in like just got on Yahoo, and it was like a personal. Like you'd be like you know sports, finance, whatever personals. You make yourself an ad, oh. and um, you type in, I'm a man searching a woman, and 15 miles of 38501. Right. Whatever. Just, just I guess, like the day naps do. But just, yeah, now now you swipe. They just pop them up to you, and you swipe them. Look, man, I'm not going to hate on Tinder, because like that's like, it might as well be called gettinglaid.com. I mean, you know, I mean, That's like, what that app was built for. <laughs> yeah. I mean, especially when it's, you can find out what, Zip code you're in or whatever. Yeah. I don't. I've never been on it, but uh, I've seen people use it, and I'm like, man, that's like, 
I mean, it's so convenient. You yeah, know? So no- I've never even I've never even seen it in person, but I always <laughs> always wanted to. You remember Hot or Not? I think. Oh, yeah. I think like, Hot or Not. Yeah. I think Tinder snatched the Hot or Not thing. Hot or Not for anybody that's not old enough to remember because I barely remember like it was a thing like 2003. You could post a picture of yourself online. Yeah. People go in there. Right, and- whether you're hot or not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. That's where the swapping thing came from. Yeah. Yeah. It was swapping thing. Yeah. Uh huh. Um. But no, man. Um, yeah. Date naps have, have evolved into a thing where like if you've seen a buddy of yours. At, or- at one point in time, it was. It was kind of taboo. Yeah, you don't tell somebody Creepy. you're on your own personal ad. Like, there's a lot of marriages start on Tinder. Yeah, or in places like that. Yeah, and but I remember like at that at that time period when when Yahoo Personals was a thing. I remember somebody would call you and be like, "Hey, so and so was on Yahoo Personals. You believe that shit? Yeah. It's like almost like when you see somebody's mugshot and you call them. <laughs> That's what Yahoo Personals was because it was like you should have been ashamed that you would have. Yeah, that you'd have done that. But I mean. Golly, man! When you live in small towns, especially mm-hmm. if you don't go out, how are you gonna meet somebody? Right. That's why people from Hermory Springs and people from Salina, people from Red Bull Springs, they they meet their high school sweetheart and they stay married for eternity because uh-huh. they never go to another city. Yeah, and never met somebody else. <laughs> never met somebody else. Um, but you know, good. It's it's evolved for sure. Um, we've kind of touched on some of this. I won't. Um. Here, here's the thing that we were going to talk about: the death of traditional media, printed newspapers, oh, yeah. periodicals, Dying. broadcast television, and radio are all fading. While digital music uh, predates the two, the 2010s, uh, it took until this de- decade for pop stars to stop selling albums. They aren't tallying CD sales anymore; they're counting u- unique streams. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you used to have to buy a whole album to get a song. Now you can just go buy the song that you're looking for. That's huge. Yeah, it, it a little bit of me, man, misses that. Misses so much of the old school stuff. Right. Now, I appreciate every single new, like the internet. You can, you know, you don't have to read through. A, let me let me hit the pros first. I love the internet. Okay, yeah, you get on here and type in whatever news article you want to pop up. Yeah. Boom, it's right there. Um, television, the streaming, very uh-huh. very beneficial. Right. Very good. Radio. Um. Hey, radio's made itself suck. Right. Hey, yeah, they done it to themselves, keep, selling more ads than what you're putting out content. You're going to well, do that. Well, and you're playing full of Georgia Line seven times in a two-hour period. You know. Yeah. You know, it's your own damn fault. Um, CDs. I, I miss the physical. I, I, I miss. I miss pulling that booklet out of the front, yeah. flipping through it. I do. I like that. Uh, I do, too. Now, now, these days, I don't buy a CD. I don't remember the last CD I bought. I buy I, my vinyls for I sitting I threw around. all of my CDs away. I've still got to tell you, want some of mine? No, I threw mine away. I'll throw yours away too if you want me to. I got so many. You know, kids will never, <coughs> kids will never understand the, having big black binders and, you, oh, God. and you're taking up your whole passenger side seat of your vehicle because uh-huh. you've got, you might have about 40 real CDs, then you've got about 50 burnt CDs. Yeah. You the know, best. now you got all in your I phone. miss making burnt CDs. I do too. Yeah. That was so much fun. Picking out, it was like making a playlist, you know. But you, you only had you was, you was only going to put thirteen songs on it, maybe twenty if you you know if they were short songs. Yeah. But to have, making that specific one, you're making it perfect because you're going to burn this and you're going to listen to that playlist, but all over and over and over again. <coughs> it's it's funny how it evolves. Yeah. Like you said, it's it's a playlist. Now, how easy is a playlist to make? Yeah. I've got songs. a thousand. Uh, <laughs> I've got a thousand songs, and I just drag them. Yeah. Click them. Um, I, I guess I hate it for people who have been in the business of those, those kind of things right. and, and they're having to evolve or lose jobs. You know, I'm sure people, I don't care that they're having to evolve because, you know, evolve or get left behind, but you know, the people that lost jobs, there was a lot of jobs, you know, newspapers, yeah. especially businesses should evolve. It's harder for people to evolve. I, I'm a fan of getting newspapers though. I, bought, I, I don't like that. I, the only thing I ever used a newspaper for is start a fire. Yeah. But I mean. I mean, I guess small town. I, I never bought the Tennessean a lot. I bought a, a lot of Tennesseans, though, at um, at um, an old record store in Nashville. They had a lot of old Tennessean newspapers, sports pages from the first year the Titans were here in town. Uh-huh. And I thought it was 10 bucks, and I picked them up. Right. So, but I mean, yeah, every, everything, it's, it's changed. I'm not, I, I can't say it's not changed for the better. Right. But a little bit of the old school in me 
misses newspapers and CDs and television. Right. I miss good television. Right. Oh, I do too. You know, and I'll go someplace that has, I like go down to my mom and dad's house and they have regular television and I'll flip through it and think, man, I wish I could watch, just watch the news. I'm getting old enough. That I think, man, I wish I could just watch channel five sometimes. Yeah. Just watch the news yeah. when it comes on. See the weather maybe. I, that's the one thing that I, I don't, you know, I have a weather app, but for whatever reason, I never think to go to it, but. People that always know what the weather is because they got to watch the news. Yeah, <laughs> you know. What? Oh yeah, uh-huh. uh, the guy that I work with, like I, you know, I have to be at work at seven. I live forty five minutes away. Right. I get up at five thirty five, take a shower, and I'm trying to head out the door by six ten. Uh huh. Um, and cussing everybody that's driving the speed limit because I can't get out of bed <laughs> earlier. But he's been at four. Fi- he's been up at four fifteen. Drank three cups of coffee. Took his dog out for a piss. Uh-huh. Smoked sixteen cigarettes. And he's like, oh, you didn't see the news this morning, Bubba? Yeah, no, I didn't. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, I didn't see the news this morning. I get out of the shower because our weather's bipolar. I'll type in Cookville weather sometimes, see what kind of long sleeve or short sleeves I'm going to put on. <laughs> hey, not knowing, you know, we can't go by seasons anymore around oh, here. Oh, God, no, 70 degrees on Christmas. Uh, millennials or something, I don't give a shit. To- we we fall yeah. on the millennial. Uh, we do. We do. That's unfortunate. It is. I think we're, uh, I think we're, we're so far removed from, yeah. at one point, normal society. Yeah. Obama and Trump, it's nothing I really want to talk about. I just, Obama got pushed so hard. So hard by a demographic Uh that wanted to say, now listen, let's tell how it is. People, the culture and a demographic wanted to say they had a black president. Uh Whether he did a good job or not a good job, it's not for me to speak on because I know zero about politics. Right. But I do know for a fact, if anybody's telling the truth, a large number of demographic wanted to say a black president existed. Yeah. And a lot of those were just like far left progressive white people that wanted to say that. And you're not wrong. Yeah. And I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sitting here trying to sound like some racist asshole from Clay County yeah. in the deep, dark woods out of the tobacco patch talking about some black president. <laughs> right. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. Some of my favorite culture ever. My favorite athletes, my favorite a lot is black culture. Uh-huh. I love black culture and, uh, to a certain extent. Uh-huh. But when you're making a big, a big, you're making a big decision like that based off skin color. Yeah. I think well, <laughs> is what it was. I think and I hope we look back at some point in time and go, why, why was it? Why, why did it even matter that he was black? Was he the best? Was he the best for it? I, I just think we'll look back at some point in time and think of, Racial, racial tensions as being really silly. Yeah, it, it is silly. It's media it's, driven, but it's all in it. But it's also other. I don't know. I just, I just never got it. I don't, I don't get the. Why do people? Why do people never want to be separated as black? You know. Yeah. Like, why can't it be? Like, everybody wants equality, but it's like. But it was a big deal to get a black president to push yeah. the. Then, as far as Trump goes, I know he says a lot of idiotic things. I know, but I know he. I know he's doing good things as well. Uh huh. But he's doing a lot of good things. I mean, the economy's economy's doing really well. The stock market's up high as it's ever been. And, but nobody gives him the credit for that because of his mouth and because of his his personality. Well, and they don't want to. They, they he's an outsider and they want him out. I've just and he never don't play the game like everybody else does. I, I've never, I've never seen every president in the world has always been satired. On uh-huh. Saturday Night Live and on all. I've never seen it to the level of Trump. No, no, no. Everybody, they had characters for them. Uh-huh. They'd make them look like to be complete assholes, right. and jackasses, and make a mockery out of them. Mm-hmm. It's a little, it's a, and it's a little, little. I mean, it's a little messed up. Yeah, that they don't have any more respect. Well, yeah, yeah. I would say you should have more respect for your president. Now, I get it. I get the, what he brings on himself. Yeah, the dichotomy <laughs> between how smooth of a conversationalist and how how Obama carried himself, everything about him said presidential. Yeah, no, you know, I agree. Just, and then nothing about Trump says presidential other than the fact that he's a wealthy businessman. You yeah. Know? No, I mean, you wanted to like Obama. Yeah. I did because, I mean, he was a sports guy. Yeah. He didn't come in here to say a lot, of, a lot of crazy things. But One of my favorite videos of Obama was he was, uh, he was getting, he was voting. He was he was doing the presidential vote, standing beside a standing beside of this woman, and uh, the guy a guy walked through and said, "That's my girl. Don't touch my girlfriend." Something like that. To Obama, mm-hmm. walked past it, and she was you know she was mortified. He said, uh, "He said what did he say?" 
And she told him, and he said, so this guy wants to come through and play me, make me feel awkward, make me feel look like a jackass. He didn't use jackass, but, you know, that's the gist of it. He said, and then he got done voting. He said, now come here and give me a hug and a kiss so that we can tell this guy what, uh, show this guy what's up, you know. So he gave her a hug, and she kissed him on the cheek, <laughs> and then he walked off, waved at the guy. You know, just an alpha move, alpha move to this guy. I thought, <laughs> well, that was cool. See if memes would have been around. Yeah. It had that one where he dropped the sunglasses with the cigarette. The joint his mouth, mouth. yeah. <laughs> But anyway, you know, I don't know enough about politics to get into it. I just, yeah. I just wish everybody would quit their own uh, agendas and all this, this stuff. And just, he's a president, like it or not. Yeah, you impeach him, and it still didn't work. Well, okay. it, it hadn't went through. It was, he's been impeached by the House. He hasn't been, it hasn't been through the Senate yet. You know how little I know about politics. Tell me. I'm sitting there reading emails for my work, and it comes across. It says, you know, and I said. Are we going to have a president by the end of the day? I didn't know I had to go through all these. <laughs> yeah, all the other stuff. Ch- <laughs> I, don't, I don't care about politics. I just wish everybody to be nice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just be nice. Fidget spinners and bottle flipping. Boy, if fidget spinners come in, it, it burnt fast. Boy, it come in and was gone. <laughs> they made their money, though. Yeah. And Boy, flipping. every little store in the in the county, state, had those stupid little fidget spinners, and now they're stacked up on shelves. Nobody will buy the damn yeah. things. That's where the, that's where, uh, all the CBD, CBD stuff now sitting where <laughs> right. your fidget spinners used to be. Yeah. Um, the doc, bottle flipping, you probably never knew because you weren't running mm-hmm. enough kids. Um, you told me about bottle flipping, but other than that, I never see it. It would ma- never make you want to shoot up a school quicker than just get around. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's a messed up thing to say. But, yeah. um, internet challenges, Tide Pods, Ice Bucket Challenges, Cinnamon, Mannequin Challenge, Harlem Shake, Condom Challenge. So the Tide Pods and the condoms where people were eating them. That was the well, that's, that's real stupid. Yeah. That's a real stupid thing. Um, eating my, Tide my, Pods. My dad challenged me to the condom challenge a couple yeah, of times. You lost. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, son, kind of grandkids. No. Uh, ice Bucket, we've we done that. Where you, well, basically it was. Where'd you do the Ice Bucket challenge? Any, any kind of uh, charity you wanted to donate to, you just basically sit there and everybody get a big thing of ice water. Oh, I know what it is, but where did you do it at? I done it in my, in my house. Really? Did I do it? You said we. Did I do it? Mm-mm. Okay. No. All right. The mannequin challenge, I think, is the coolest one out of all of them. Is that where everybody in the room just stands still? Yeah. Yeah. I think it was funny. It was funny. <laughs> Thank you for the confirmation. It was funny. It was funny. <laughs> Those were great. The Harlem Shakes were good. They were they were good, too. Is, is the 2010s when the uh, flash mobs come in? What's that? Where... Uh, just all of a sudden, the whole place will be dancing. I don't know. I bet that was a. Would well, have been a lot better if that would have been typing. When, <laughs> um, I believe flash mobs come in, and you'll figure that out internet one of these days. And one of these days, you know, I'll I'll have to. Just check this out. This is a flash mob started by a little girl. This is. I don't know if these are. Of course, there's thirty seconds worth of some damn ad. And then, I, as I click away from it, the thing pops up. And says you can skip it in one second. Four, three, two, one. Skip ads. So this is a flash mob. Well, this doesn't have anything to do with a flash mob. They tricked the shit out of me. <laughs> I sure said flash mob. Really good, really good <laughs> podcast stuff here. <laughs> really good podcast stuff. I'd love to see this flash mob, flash mob you speak of. See, just all of a sudden, a whole group of. Let me just do it in a train station. I know that's the one that. Here we go. See, everybody just milling about in the train station. Yeah. Just. Having a normal old. Well, that's 2009. Ooh. The video was made. 34 million views. Just outside of the tens. And then the sound of music starts playing. Really loud. Everybody's just kind of wondering what in the hell's going on. Watch. Right here. Everybody's wondering.
doe, a deer, a female deer, rain, a drop of golden sun, me, a name I call my I never saw this a day in my life. A long, long way to run. <laughs> so, a needle pulling thread, la, a note to follow so. See, there's just more and more people just start dancing. Here eventually this entire train station is going to be. I'm going to skip forward some here. <laughs> I didn't realize it unwound so slowly. Is that real though? Yeah, that was real. People just got that crazy all of a sudden? No, this is a group that come in. Oh, okay. That guy right there was stealing everybody's wallets. I've seen that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so an entire group would come in and just start dancing I, and singing I, in the place. I got you. Anyway. I, I, okay. Yeah. No, I remember that. You don't remember that? No. Yeah. Flash Mob apparently started outside of the 10s. 2009's so really a little blurrier for me than 2019. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> agree on that? I'll, I'll agree with that <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Uh, um. So that's that's a few things that you can remember by the decade there. Um. What uh, who do you have to go? If you had to pick a musician for the decade, who would yeah. you go for? Oh, just a guy that had a better ten year period than anybody else. Boy, I don't know. Blake Shelton had a hell of a ten year run there. I'm not gonna let you answer that with Blake Shelton. <laughs> There's no way. I don't know who. I don't know who in the tens would have been the bigger one. I don't know. Uh, Adam Levine's group had a big. Maroon Five had a big. Uh, I, I guess Adam Levine actually had a big one. Uh, this has been really big for Kanye West last ten years. Yeah. Uh, Travis Scott would have had a big, big ten. Drake would have had a big ten. Yeah. I really don't know of any country artist that would have had a big one. Sturgill had a big last few years. Yeah, he started. I mean, you can kind of t- 2013 on. So I mean, yeah. He, uh, I can't believe you. I can't wrap my mind around the fact that we're. We're badass outlaw country music supporters, and you're going to name Blake Shelton as the first name. <laughs> throw I was up. just thinking, who had a, who would have had the biggest? But overall, because his his move to the Voice, I guess, and everything. Yeah, I mean, he had a huge 2010s. He did. He did. Yeah, opened up the old Reds all over yeah. Tennessee. Um, Unfortunately, Florida Georgia Line had really big 2010s. They did. Yeah. yeah. I guess personally, if I most, uh, most of the people that we listen to didn't have huge twenty no. tens. <laughs> no, they don't. Well, I mean, big for them maybe, but yeah. In the grand scheme of things, most wouldn't. of the guys we listen to didn't really like I said. The last you know, five years, Sturgill maybe. hit in twenty thirteen. Childers has had a big last three years. Yeah, you know, uh, nationally. Uh, you know, I, I'll 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 kick off. Uh, I'll I'll show Shooter some love on that, and and not from a. <laughs> Not from was not from, his thousands bigger than his tens though? No, I don't. I wouldn't think so. Here's my argument on that. He came out in 2005 and he had three records, three right. country albums. The first one did well. The other two kind of not. Uh-huh. What I'm looking at in the grand scheme of things for him is, and I know we hadn't talked about him as much on the show this year as as we uh-huh. had in the past. What you look at, he starts off the decade with the Black Ribbons album, the concept album that was narrated by Stephen King. That's that's a big deal to have Stephen King narrating your right. your album. He comes back around with Outlaw You, which is one of his more notable songs. Uh-huh. Comes out with the two country albums, The Family Man with the, um, the Other Life, back-to-back albums, 2011-2012. And it kind of and kind of doesn't take off as much. Right. Then he gets with uh, John Hensley, and he starts Black Country Rock, and he starts establishing these artists, like Justin and I talked about on the podcast. Your link to some of these new artists came from him. But when he started Black Country Rock and he started establishing other things, you look what he's done since. He produced a Grammy award-winning album with Brandy Carlisle, mm-hmm. who's one of the most respected artists out there. He produced Tanya Tucker's most revered album in years this past year. Uh-huh. He's producing Manson stuff that's that's really getting some good reviews. So as far as as far as doing as far as his career, maybe he had bigger t- tens. Yeah, no, as far as his music, his music, yeah. I think his thousands were huge because to me, Electric Rodeo, there's, he, he doesn't have a better album than Electric Rodeo. Yeah. That's, that's probably my favorite overall. Yeah. Well, of those earlier ones, I don't know, but I really like his newer stuff. Uh, that other life album was, was one of my favorites. Uh-huh. Um, 
the wolf and electric rodeo man no i agree i yeah. mean i agree for but i guess from a career standpoint of where he's at uh kind of just doing what he wants to don't wait up for me for george disco tribute album i mean you know he just that's the point right there you're just like i'm just doing whatever i want to do right from a mainstream sense i guess eric church eric church kept digging you know when the when the, yeah. de- when the decade started he had centers like me in Carolina, which are still my two favorite Eric Church albums. But he was getting bigger when in 2011 hit when Chief came out. That's when he that's when he broke into the mainstream. Uh huh. And he keeps he keeps. I mean, he's there. Yeah, you leveling know? up. He just keeps leveling up. And then, then I, to me, I mean, neither one of those guys obviously have what Florida Georgia Line has done. What all these guys have done. We don't talk about those guys on the show, yeah. <laughs> so, in, uh, in, a, in a positive light. So the uh, Garth had a few good last few years. He's not entertaining the year, though. He is technically he is. I had to look up something. What after our uh, our little? You don't even know what concert you go to anymore. Uh-uh. No, because I. Like we had, we had a pretty not heated debate about Eric Church versus Garth Brooks, but I, I'm gonna take Eric Church and you're gonna take Garth Brooks. Okay, but you remember? Could you remember? We got in and I'm like, no, you're you're wrong. Well, you're you're wrong. I don't I don't even remember the conversation we're when talking Eric about. Church, right? When Eric Garth Brooks got uh, entertainment of the year, uh-huh. and you went with Garth Brooks, and I said I gotta go to Eric Church. Right. But I said it's not even a bad uh, answer, Garth. I get it. Uh-huh. I said, well, Garth don't do anything. You said, yeah, he done a, he done a gar- concert this year. I was there. Me and my wife went. For my birthday. And I said, I don't remember it. Mm-hmm. I said, well, Lucas went. Uh-huh. I'm not going to tell Lucas he didn't go to a concert. Right. I can't find it. I looked at it. Not that I looked that up. Uh-huh. But I looked with a buddy at work on our lunch one day. And I said, they 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 could not have done the same amount of shows. I said, guards don't, don't play that many shows anymore. Uh-huh. After, after it's all said and done, from what I could find. Uh-huh. Uh, they played about the same amount of shows. Oh, really? Huh? Garth, and I, it's hard to find. But you, I, I don't understand how people can find everything to do with every concert ever. Right. I couldn't find one at Bridgestone Arena for your birthday, though. Really? The closest one to Bridgestone I could find was November 2017. Huh? I said, surely in hell now. I ain't off no. <laughs> huh? I might, I might be off that far, <laughs> but I wouldn't think so. I mean, we went for my birthday. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's why I laughed at my buddy at work, yeah. and I said, when Lucas said he went to Garth Brooks for his birthday, I said, I didn't remember him playing, uh-huh. but I don't follow Garth Brooks, you know. Right. Then I looked it up, and I went, and I was looking at back at past shows. Yeah. Now, nah, it, hell, I could be that <laughs> far off. I could be, what, five months off of. it. No, you said you went this year for your birthday. That's what I'm saying. I guess I could be five months off, but it was for my birthday. That would have been March 2019. And it, the show was in November 2017. Oh, well, that, oh, it's a lot further. <laughs> I don't think I'm that far off. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. That's what I laughed and I yeah. said. I Maybe said, 2018, but. Yeah. Uh, I said, now listen. Uh-huh. Lucas was at this concert. I wasn't. Right. But he said he went this year for his birthday. The last one I can see uh-huh. is November 17. I said, I don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah. But I, I know Eric, I'm an Eric Church fan. Yeah. <laughs> and he's a Garth Brooks fan. We. Uh. I, hell, I don't even know how to find it. But we'll look. We'll look, we'll it, look up, it up we'll later. Go. Yeah, yeah. Nobody cares. Yeah, no arguments. But yeah, it was, I meant to been. I meant to tell you that a few times. I'm like, that's funny. I don't know what damn show. I, I think he went to Vegas and saw him. I might have. I might. <laughs> I might have went someplace else and saw him. Uh, um, but anyway, yeah, you can't go wrong with either one. Of them. No, you really no. can't. Uh-uh. He puts on a damn good show. He does. I just when and, I was, when, and it may have been so good that I'm. I thought I saw it this year, and <laughs> I seen it <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> I doubt that. I doubt that. Yeah, I do. Too. <laughs> um, but no, that's who I'd go. I'd go with. I mean, Garth. One of those just, two. Golly, Garth's just. He's Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks. Uh, sh- short of that one time he was. Chris Gaines. Chris Gaines. He's <laughs> he's, he's, always, not, he's not missed much. <laughs> yeah. Boy, but, he swung and missed hard that time. But other than that, he's been pretty good. What do you think he put that album out for? Do you think he just want to try something new? And you know, to... he d- may not wanted to screw up the Garth Brooks name. Yeah. They want to try some different music. Yeah. And didn't know how to do it. And then again, somebody might have been going, hey, it's a really good idea. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really good idea. Yeah. I thought so too. That's why I wasn't hearing some of them earphones in the wrong ear. That's that's hilarious. You I, had them backwards. I didn't know they didn't work. D- can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, well, that's weird. <laughs> Did you ever know they didn't work like that? Uh, well, I mean, they're not pointed into your eardrum. I way. know, but I couldn't hear anything. I, I wouldn't oh. get any feedback whatsoever. That's why it, 
looking at this you so whole weird. Show. Convers- <laughs> oh, it just happened when I put oh. my sweatshirt back on a minute ago. Uh, real quick, I, I have some things wrote down for like athlete of the decade. Yeah. So LeBron. I, think, I hate to, but it is. It is. Eric, yeah. You got your Steph Curry loyalists out there. Yeah. Hey, if coming you want, in late. If, yeah. If you want to be honest, yeah, he got drafted in 09, but you spent the first quarter of this decade wondering, wondering if his ankles were going to hold up. Right. Now, when he come in, he come in hot. Right. You know, when he when he got there. Mm-hmm. Tom Brady in the Tom Brady yeah. in the football NFL. I mean, whether anybody wants to argue anybody else's name or not, that's fine. But it's Tom Brady. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I guess because I watched NBA with a little closer of an eye. You know, I don't watch all the Patriots games. I guess actually Tom Brady and the Patriots probably would be a better bet. But LeBron, you know, he did in the first ever big free agency debate when he when he made that decision in 2010 to, leave Cleveland, yeah. to, to go to Miami and that was such a douchebag move and mm-hmm. then when he followed he he was in finals from 2011 to 2018 I mean you're in eight straight finals it's pretty big pretty yeah. big decade thank god he lost most of them <laughs> but I mean he's going to go down yeah top historical you know every statistical category then um I, spectacle of the decade like what's the coolest thing you can remember that you were like, present at I know I you don't. I know you did anything. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got to see, I got to see a C-section and a, and a live birth. <laughs> that's that's the two biggest things, yeah. spectacles I saw this year <laughs> or this decade. Yeah, I guess mine would be uh, went to a Bonnaroo and a WrestleMania. Ah, so one cool thing and one for the nerds. Yeah, but you know, I'd hate to know if I ever went to a WrestleMania. I went in like WrestleMania eleven, like at the Hartford Civic Center, and. You know, I'd hate uh-huh. to know that that's the WrestleMania I went to. Now, the WrestleMania I went to was, uh, I felt a little cheated. Now, I did feel a little cheated. All right. It was in Atlanta, but to see the see the show that the WrestleMania, WWE puts on for WrestleMania, it's like a five-day event. Right. You know, you've got your, your leading up and on Thursday, then you had the Hall of Fame on. But back then, they didn't have NXT and all that stuff. And, uh but I got to see that that weekend. I got to see my favorite wrestler of all time, Shawn Michaels, go in the Hall of Fame. Uh huh. Got to see the Click reunion there. But to see just how many thousands and thousands and thousands of people, mm-hmm. like I don't know how many was at that particular WrestleMania, but you're looking at you know seventy to, seventy to a hundred thousand anytime they have a WrestleMania. Uh huh. Now, the two years prior to that, they had Shawn Michaels versus the Undertaker. The year before it was Shawn Michaels' actual retirement match. Out in Phoenix against the Undertaker. The two main events after the one I went to was The Rock versus John Cena. Uh, Me, I got to see The Miz. Mm, oof. <laughs> Miz versus John Cena. Uh-huh. Now, Stone Cold made an appearance that night on his four wheeler. Right. The Rock was the special guest host, but I got to see The Miz. The Miz. The uh, <laughs> straight from Road Rules. Road Rules. Road Rules. Road Rules. Road Rules. Road Rules. That's the WrestleMania moment I got to mm. see. Mm. Pretty shitty card, yeah. But me and Don went. And, um, the Bonnaroo though, pretty cool. That's you seen like Eminem and I no, it wasn't Eminem. Eminem was the next year, I think. Uh, the year that I went, it was uh, Jay Z. Right, that's pretty big. Jay Z and Stevie Wonder, um, Weezer, Dave Matthews, which put me right to sleep. People love that guy. I they love him, and I don't get it. There's a lot of people love Dave Matthews. Yeah, I, I, I fell asleep and. Had a blow up sheep attached to me the rest of the night, thanks to my buddies Clint and Dusty. Everybody, a, every, everybody it's, stopped and took it's pictures. Real, real odd. It's real odd. Yeah, I, I didn't know it for months and months, and they're like that you had it. Oh yeah, you remember that time you passed out at Bonnaroo and had that, uh, and you were uh, Dave Matthews, and everybody was like jamming out, and uh, we blew up that uh, sheep and uh, put it next to you, and everybody was making pictures of you and the sheep. That's funny. I didn't know it, Clint. I, have to be I know it now, buddy. And I wasn't messed up. I wasn't passed out. I was just like tired. Like uh, that weekend drained me uh-huh. because the guy that went with him the year before. They made fun of not being able to hang. So you tried to hang. With I tried to hang. Days. I was up at six a.m. trying to fall asleep. They were burning the bottom of my shoes because they wouldn't let me go to sleep. But you know, looking back at that though, man, you got to see Jamie Johnson, John Fogarty, Chris Christopherson, uh, Zach Brown before he sucked. Uh, Miranda Lambert. Well, he he went from he went sucking, then had a monster career to what the hell are you doing now? I don't, Zach know, Brown? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. Yeah. But then that was actually then that was about uh, like two months before Ragweed split up. So I actually got to see two Ragweed shows that year, and I don't even remember them. <laughs> like, I hate that my memory is so bad. Right. Because I wasn't doing drugs. I can promise you that. 
Yeah. And we're, we're just, uh, we're slowly sliding into dementia. Yeah. And I, and I wasn't really drinking because it was 105 degrees. Ooh, that's not and good. And every time you drink, you're just. You're it's s- not good. It's not good to drink beer. Yeah. At 105, you're pissing all your liquid out. So it out. sucks. I don't remember it. I mean, but I got to see an acoustic and a live performance across any ragweed. Huh. Don't even remember it. Met them. I barely remember walking through the line. <laughs> you know what else in the tens uh, would, would be really big that we didn't even cover that for all my nerds out there, the Marvel movies, you know, we kind of. Kind of blink, blinked over it, but it was huge for the superheroes in the tens. Yeah, that was m- movies of the decade. Was the Marvel movies? Yeah, Justice League. Yeah, D- it's DC. Yeah, DC, it? but it you know it was it tried to be big. Jason Momoa, you know, he did a really good job with his. They kind of Henry Cavill kind of shit the bed with the Superman stuff for whatever reason. But so, but that's it's like there's a new one every year. Yeah, and the just, Marvel movies just keep setting the yeah bar. The Avengers, yeah. Uh, well, we've been doing this for two hours now. Wow. Two hours and oh my god, forty eight, forty nine seconds. Two hours. Two hours. Yeah, we better wrap this up. All I gotta say is, the end of this show is the Titans win today, and they're in the playoffs, and they're playing against backups. You're, hey, you're losing for sure. You're the Titans, okay? You're not the Patriots. You're not some. Don't don't go out there and dick around. You got your big bastard, two hundred fifty pound running back back. You got Ryan Tannehill playing for a seventy eighty million dollar contract. Go out and, there and beat the brakes off those backups. And you're playing the backup team. Go do it. If there, if you lose today, there's no excuse for you. No excuse. I'd bet with you right now. I, I, I don't have any cash, but I'd bet I'd bet you right now that they lose. I hope not. I can't handle it. Just leave me twenty dollars. I, I hope they're playing at Kansas City at twelve o'clock next Saturday. They're not going to be because and. Sucks that this is the end of an era, kind of, for the Titans in two ways. Two guys that are kind of turning it around that franchise are probably going to be on the field for the last time today. Who? Well, I mean, one's not even on the field. He's on IR. Marcus Mariota, of course, uh-huh. and Delaney Walker. Uh-huh. I just want to say to some people real quick that you know, I see it on Twitter. People's going to have to quit this Marcus Mariota hate. You know? Well, they, can, they can be over it. The, well, the thing is, is once he's gone, they'll be saying – how great he was. Well, I mean, it, well, I'm saying there's so many people that are still that still love Marcus Mariota, uh-huh. but I mean, there's people that are are bashing him uh-huh. because he didn't work out. Now he didn't work out. I'm not going to call him a bust. I'm not going to call him a bust. Well, um, was he kind of a bust? A little bit, yes, yes. I mean, yes. If uh-huh. you draft somebody number two overall and you spend five years with them and they don't, they're not your franchise quarterback, then that's a bust. You're right. I guess so. I'm not going to call him one because I remember sitting in that stadium in 2014, the year before he was drafted, and we went two and 14, and we were we were trotting out guys named Zach Matt, Zach Mattenberger and Bishop Sankey, <laughs> and we had no hope whatsoever to ever win a game. When he came here. Now, I remember the tight spiral he threw in Detroit on fourth down to win the game against the Lions. I remember in Mike Malarkey's first game as interim coach when he fakes right, throws left to win the game of a pass to Anthony Fasano. You remember the 87-yard touchdown run as a rookie. Stiff arm and Barry Church into the ground to get the playoff win in your end against Jacksonville, mm-hmm. leading the key block um, later on in that game. The key block at Kansas City when Derrick Henry – was was running to seal that game after he threw a touchdown to himself. Was it a fluke play? Yes. He scrambled through what should have been an interception. Guy pushes him, bats the ball down, catches it t- for his own touchdown. Hmm. Okay? That's that's the way Titans fans need to remember Marcus Mario. He didn't work out, but he was a nice guy. He didn't come here and he wasn't a dick. He did everything for the community. What about Taylor Lewan? How did his year turn out? He's had an okay year to be suspended the first four games of the year. Yeah. He struggled here and there, but hmm. so it sucks when you're on the stuff, man. You don't come back as strong. People are gonna say you're on the stuff. Yeah, uh, P- PEDs are PEDs for a reason. But with what with Mariota, uh, when you look at the like, top ten plays of the decade, Mariota owns like three or four of them of the top ten. Now, was it because we were sucking so long, mediocre? Yes, <laughs> but that, that people got to remember. Not, you know, I can point you out a handful of quarterback busts every year and every draft. He done a lot of good things in Nashville, and people need to remember that. Obviously, he didn't work out long term, but that memory of him stiff arm and Barry Church, and that stiff arm and that running against Jacksonville, it's legendary. Some of the stuff he done, man. He's when he was on, it was a beautiful thing to watch. And Delaney Walker, same thing. Uh, Rustin Webster didn't do a lot of good things for the as a general manager here, but bringing Delaney Walker and Bernard Pollard here, 
when they played in the Super Bowl, Ravens versus um, 49ers. Then they both signed. Bernard didn't work out as well, but Delaney's like the best best free agent signing probably ever had been. Maybe we'll get like a Tom Brady. Maybe we'll get one of those guys. That, one of these days. One of these days. All right, everybody. That's 2019. We'll see you in the new decade, 2020. Love you, everybody. Bye.